Hey guys, what's up? It's Alex or Nuznas here, and today's video is actually going to be the ultimate money making guide. Now, the reason I'm making this video is because often on videos or money makers I have, people ask for certain things like farm run guides, daily run guides, free to play money making methods, high level methods, you name it. People ask, hey, did you make a video on this? Can you make a video on this? And I always have to respond, link a video. So I thought maybe I'd combine all my money making videos, everything dealing with money making tips, high level methods, low level methods, free to play methods everything into one condensed form. I'd get rid of all the intros and outros. I'd cut everything down to be more efficient and I'd put it all into a huge video. So you may have seen some of these methods before, but I thought this could be a good video to have all sorts of money making methods. Like I said, low level, mid level, high level, free to play, miscellaneous things and stuff like that. And I know people make movie type videos for their YouTube series. And I thought this could be interesting as your one stop video for all things money making. So make sure to check the description for all the timestamps on all the methods. It'll be kind of like a glossary since this video is so big. So you can skip to whatever you like use this video as motivation if you need a certain method you want to find a new money making method or just get some general tips so let's get started all right so all right guys so the first method is going to require just the cabin fever quest and some combat equipment it doesn't really matter what combat equipment because the things you're going to be killing have about 250 hp but the cabin fever quest is required because you need to go to mosla harmless which you can get from by chartering a boat from Catherby. And uh, the quest only requires like level 40 skills, so it's very, very beginner quest, uh, you know, maybe a medium sized quest. So it's really not that hard, and most people are gonna have it done, and most new players should get it done uh, pretty easily. So that's the only quest you'll need, and you'll want to go to Mosul Harmless with some combat gear. Like I said, uh, your combat stats won't need to be that high at all. Uh, the only thing is there are some level like 60 horrors on this island so uh, you will have to watch out for those so if you're really really low combat you may need some food but I really don't think you will um, unless you're extremely low combat so what you'll need to do is you'll need to follow the path I'm going and go to, until you see a fence and basically there should be a bank chest as well and uh, once you're here, this is the Trouble Brewing minigame, and just north of the Trouble Brewing minigame are going to be three or four snakes. Now, the snakes basically die in one hit, and um, you'll kill them and you'll get snake hide. And this snake hide is actually going for like 12k each because they're used to kill or used to make summoning pouches and people use the uh the summoning pouches that uh you make with snake hide very often so that is why they're so expensive so basically another tip i want to give you guys is uh the snakes can be kind of hard to see um because of all the grass and uh stuff around so as you can see like they kind of blend in a little bit so here i'm really like looking for them wondering where they are but there is a way to get around this. So if you go to your settings, you want to go to your settings and then go to your graphics settings. And in here, um, you're going to want to turn off ground decoration, which is at the bottom. You're going to want to untick that box. And I believe you will also want to turn your textures, which say compress there, as you can see. Um, you'll want to turn them to off as well. And basically what this will do is make it much, much easier to see the snakes because you won't have any of the ground decoration and stuff like that. So it should be a real breeze to see them. And there's about three super close to the bank chests and one a little further to the left near the cave horrors. Um, so you can just kill the three near the bank chest to kind of stay safe or you can go over to the left and uh, Kill the other one there, which I ended up doing because I don't really um, Don't really fear the cave horrors at all um, So this is honestly a really really good method uh, If you're a low level and you want to get some starting money because it honestly does not take long at all to kill these um, as you can see I'm killing them in one hit and they're only 250 HP so like I mean, you can come here with like mithril weapons and stuff. Like you really don't need high stats to come here that out pretty easily. So I ended up putting uh, the snake hide and the G here for pretty low, like eight or nine K. And they actually all ended up insta selling for about 12 K each. So we made 300 K for one inventory. 
you can do 15 inventories an hour. So this is 4.7 mil GP an hour with only a quest requirement. Turning dragon hide into dragon leather, you're going to need a portable crafter for this, which you can buy off the GE, and you'll want to be near a bank chest. So you'll want to buy whatever tea hide you can afford. The higher, the better. You'll make more money. But I'm using red dragon hide because it's probably one of the least expensive dragon hides, and you'll still make a decent amount of money. So you don't need any requirements for this except a little bit of money in your in your money pouch and. Uh, the dehyde. So you'll obviously need a little bit of money to invest, but you can do this 1,000 dragon hide at a time and then go back and buy more after you make your profit. So what you're going to want to do is make the put the portable crafter up and make a preset with your dragon hide and then just take it out and right click the portable crafter and click tan leather and you'll want to just repeat this over and over again and basically I figured out that you could a little bit later in this clip, you'll see that I actually figure out that you can configure the portable crafter so that you can just left click and you don't have to right click. Um, so this makes it honestly so much easier to tan the dragon hide because you're just left click, left click, left click, left click, and it's really, really easy. I was so surprised how fast you could do this. And uh, honestly, for new players, I just want to make some money fast. This is an awesome method. You just need a little money. So here you can see I configured the portable crafter to left click. So I can just left click, tan, left click the bank chest. And I'm actually at Castle Wars, which is a really good spot to do this. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's really, really easy. You don't need any requirements except money, like I said. So basically here, uh, I'm selling the dragon hide and I end up selling a thousand red dragon leather for almost 3.2 mil. So I tanned 1,000 dragon hide in two minutes. So that is 30,000 dragon hide an hour. But the RuneScape wiki actually says it's possible to tan up to 60k hides an hour with max efficiency. So we made about 166k per 1,000 dragon leather. That is also including the portable crafter as well. So that is about 5 mil an hour that we made, and if you tan at the rate the wiki says you can, that can be up to 10 mil an hour, and even more with the higher level of dehyde, so if you did royal dehyde or black dehyde. But of course, I chose red because it was cheaper, and it was more, uh, you know, on the page of something a low-level player would be able to buy rather than buy the higher level dehyde going to have no requirements whatsoever. So you're gonna to wanna to go to Catherby and get the insect repellent in the northeastern house. And this is all you're gonna need. And basically this method is gonna be collecting honeycombs from the beehives. This is gonna be less money per hour than the other methods, uh, but it does feature absolutely no requirements. As long as you're a member, you just go to Catherby and you can start doing this and making money. So you can basically do this on a fresh account. So you want to come over to the west and open the gate, and you want to use your insect repellent on a beehive. After you do that, you're just want to, gonna wanna take honey from the beehive and right click, take honey, right click, take honey, right click, take honey. It's really, really easy, and this is basically the entire method. Um, like I said, there are no requirements whatsoever, and uh, you'll just need to come to Catherby and get the insect repellent. So this is amazing for a fresh new account if you need some starter cash um, and you don't have really anything done on the account. So the reason the honeycomb are expensive is because they're actually used to make the honey badger pouch uh, for trading summoning. So that's why that's their use. That's why they have some value. Um, after you get your full inventory, you're going to want to come over here and bank and then you will just repeat this method uh, of course you can use surge and you can use um, bladed dive if you have it but if you have those things like bladed dive you're probably not going to be doing this method but if you are a new player i would put surge uh, a magic ability on your bar i don't think it actually requires that high of magic and it will help speed up your banking a little bit it may vary it may take a little bit to sell so you may have to leave it in uh, but for such a low requirement method i think it is well worth it 
Uh, so this comes out to about 1.3 mil an hour for absolutely no requirements. Um, it could be less. Uh, you know, I saw Honeycomb selling for like 500 GP each before, uh, which would make it about around eight, seven, eight hundred k an hour, which is still very good for such low requirements. And what we're going to be doing is killing the giant mimic in beginner mode. This fight is very, very easy. Level 50 or so combat stats. 50 to 60 is probably a good range. However, I will be using tier 60 weapons to test this method in the video today. And this is my recommended gear setup for around 50 to 60 combat stats. I'm using a Guthic Staff and Fool Mystic. As for inventory, I recommend to just bring a little bit of food and runes, and that's about all you'll need. You can bring potions to boost your stats, but the Giant Mimic is level 38 and only has 25,000 life points, so it's not going to be very hard to kill at all. So basically, to do this method, you'll just want to buy Mimic kill tokens on the Grand Exchange. These will allow you to fight the Giant Mimic. Then what you want to do is click them and click Beginner, and then you'll be transported into the Giant Mimic boss fight. The fight for a beginner is very simple. The Mimic only has 25k life points and dies really, really fast. The only attacks the Mimic will use are the Charge Attack and Coin Toss. All you really have to do to dodge these is to just move out of the way when the indicators come up on screen. This is a very simple fight compared to the Elite Giant Mimic. Indicators will come on screen whenever the Mimic is going to use special attacks. And the Mimic, of course, like I said, can only use two special attacks. Uh, unlike the Elite Giant Mimic, and of course has way lower life points. So to do this, I use a tier 60 weapon, and I didn't use any potions or prayers, and I used level 41 air spells. So I tried to simulate as much as I could being a low level. Of course, I may hit a bit more because of course my magic level is 99, but I tried my best to simulate a low level doing this. So your kills might be a little less than mine, but keep in mind, I wasn't focusing really hard. I was using revolution and I was AFKing pretty much all this. So in 12 minutes, I ended up killing about 20 Mimics, which comes out to around 100 kills per hour. However, if you're a low, lower level and don't have as good of gear or high of levels, you should expect at the lowest probably 60 kills per hour and more likely around 80 kills per hour once you get the hang of it. Now we're going to take a look at the loot. So I opened my 20 loot chests and I got kind of unlucky. I only got one Scrimshaw and it was the cheapest one. So in 12 minutes, I made about 600k, which comes out to about 400k profit in 12 minutes if you minus the token costs. This is only around 2 mil per hour profit, which is still pretty good. However, if you can get 80 kills per hour on average, you should get around 4.5 million loot or make a little under 3 million profit. I would say this method is anywhere from 2.5 mil to 4 mil an hour, depending on your luck, and it's actually pretty fun method you will only need level 31 hunter however i highly recommend having 51 hunter so you don't fail to catch the larubia as often so for this method all you're going to need in terms of items and gear is a hatchet and knife in your tool belt a teasing stick in your inventory and then some magic note paper if you don't want to worry about banking however you can bank and walk back also, if you have the level, a Spirit Larupia, Spirit Grok, Spirit Kayat, or Arctic Bear, which all boost your Hunter level, is good to have as well, as it will help you fail less to catch the Larupia. So first, you're going to want to go to this hunting area of the Feldic, Feldip Hills to start hunting the Larupia. Once we get there, there's a few methods to do this. First, you need to make a trap. You'll want to start by cutting maybe 10 or so logs from the trees around the jungle. After this, you'll need to build a pitfall trap with your logs and click on a Larupia to tease it and then make it follow you. Once you have the trap built and the Larupia following you, you'll then want to walk up to your trap, jump over it, and then the Larupia will either fall in the trap and you'll be able to harvest it for its fur, or it will jump over the trap. If the Larupia jumps over your trap, you'll have to go and bring it to a different trap to catch it. The higher your hunter level is, the better this is. 
However, this is a low level money making guide. And at 51 Hunter, you should have no problem catching a decent amount of these. However, you'll definitely fail more than I did. If you can get into a groove and not fail too often, you can actually spawn trap these like I did here. All you do is jump over the trap, harvest the Larupia, build the trap, jump back over, and click the Larupia as soon as it spawns and repeat. This makes it super easy to continuously catch them if you aren't failing too often. Now, you'll also sometimes get a tattered Larupia fur and big bones. You'll just want to bury the bones and drop the fur. So I did this for around 10 minutes and I ended up getting around 20 Larupia fur. However, if we look at the price check, that comes out to 600K. And keep in mind all these Larupia fur insta sold and I ended up getting 603K for them all. This comes out to 3.6 mil an hour. However, again, this all depends on how much you fail, and I'd say at the low end, this is a solid 2 mil per hour, up to around 4 mil an hour, depending how good of a groove you can get into and how little you fail. The method's going to be is making clockwork in your player-owned house. So for this method, all you'll need is level 25 construction for the crafting bench 2, and then you'll also need level 8 crafting to be able to make the actual clockwork. You will also want around 500k starting cash. So for this method, all you'll need to do is bring house teleports and an inventory full of steel bars. What you will do is you'll go and you'll teleport to your house and you'll go to your crafting bench. Then all you need to do is click make clockwork and then you can AFK for around two minutes while you make the clockwork, which is really, really nice. Then, after you're done and all your clockwork is made, you'll want to teleport out to a bank. I personally used a Ring of Dueling to teleport for Castle Wars, as this is really easy to get access to as a low level. Then what you'll want to do is rebank and teleport back to your house and just repeat this method and continue making clockwork and banking. It's honestly so easy and super AFK, and it's also super nice for the requirements. I love that I found such an AFK method for lower levels that really doesn't require much. Now we're going to look at how much money this method is per hour. So I ended up buying 100 steel bars to turn into clockwork, and it only took me 5 minutes to finish all the steel bars. This comes out to 350k GP made in 5 minutes, but of course we have to account for the supplies, so if we minus our steel bars and teleport tab costs, it comes out to about 250k profit in 5 minutes, or around 3 million GP per hour, making 1200 clockworks per hour AFK. This is honestly one of my favorite low level methods I've ever found, and I highly recommend you try it out if you're looking for a nice AFK method. It's so again, for the requirements, they're really, really low. You only need a level one crafting, which unless you're really bad at crafting and somehow have negative crafting, then you should have this one down. You'll also need some GP anywhere between two to 10 mil. Less money just means you'll have to sell your granite to buy more when you're done. So basically you want 500 grams of granite since they sell for over 1k each. So what you do is you can buy the 2 kilogram blocks and get 4 pieces from each or the 5 kg blocks and get 10 granite pieces from each. I ended up buying some of the 5k and 2 kg blocks to test both and remember the prices will differ but make sure you calculate it out first. For instance a 5 kg block cost 5k but I get 10 smaller pieces of granite which sell for 1k each so that's 5k profit per block so of course super good but the prices may drop or be less but I actually talked about this method in an old video many months ago and I was shocked when it worked right away when I tried it again so it seems like people just don't continue to do this even though it's really good so to do this method you'll just want to make a preset with your granite blocks for the 5kg blocks you can only cut two at once and 
for the 2kg blocks, you can cut 7 per inventory. Then you sadly have to right click the granite, because for me the first option is drop, unless you guys know how to turn that off, I had to right click. Then you just cut the granite, bank, use your preset, and repeat. It's really really easy and super fast. So now we're going to get into some calculations on the profit for each kg, the prices, everything like that. So if we look at the 5kg blocks, I bought 237 of them at 5.2k each. I spent 7.5 minutes and I profited 1.4 million GP, which makes our profit 11.6 mil per hour with no requirements. Now keep in mind, I got these blocks at a really good price it seems, but even if they went to like 8k or 9k each, it would still be some pretty decent money. Now moving on to the 2kg blocks, I bought a hundred of these for 3k each and it took me two and a half minutes to break these ones down. I ended up selling them for around 153k profit, which still comes out to 3.7 million GP per hour, like I said, with very low requirements. So even though the 2kg costed way more in terms of uh, the 500 gram pieces you get, I still ended up profiting a decent amount. Like I said guys, this method is really good and even if granite goes up in price now, not that many people consistently do this, so I think if it goes up and you check again in a week, they'll probably be cheap again. There's different kilogram ones that you can look for and it just makes sure to check the GE prices because this is a great method to little to no requirements. All right, guys, so moving on, we are going to look at the next method, which is going to be catching green salamanders with the hunter skill. Now, green salamanders are a secondary ingredient for summoning and sell for around 7.5k each on the GE and have relatively low requirements. Now, the requirements for this method are level 29 hunter, and you'll need three ropes and three fishing nets. The salamanders are located in the Mauritania swamp, so you'll also need access to the Canifis area. Now to do this method, it's really quite simple. You'll go to the location marked on the map and you'll set up your net traps and click on the green salamanders when they're caught. You can use magic note paper to note your salamanders whenever you want so you never have to leave, or you can bank in around 30 seconds at the Mauritania bank. Whichever method you think is the best for you, I personally use note paper because I didn't mind the extra cash just to sit there. So I found this method pretty chill and it really didn't take much concentration at all. The super nice thing is if you are a low level, like level 29 hunter, you'll be getting decent hunter XP around 40k per hour while doing this so you'll be training up your hunter pretty fast while doing this as well so now we're going to look at the profit calculation and we're going to see the gp per hour based on your hunter level now keep in mind the higher your hunter level is the more you'll make for instance at level 60 you can use four traps which will increase your profit even more you don't need super high like level 99 but i'll be showing you the profits now all right, so looking at the profits, we have at level 99, using four traps, I was catching 582 swamp lizards per hour. Now at level 60, using four traps as well, you can catch around 400 or so of these per hour. And then at level 29, the lowest level to catch these, using only three traps, you can still catch 290 of these per hour. And at level 99, you'll profit at 4 mil, maybe 5 mil. At level 60, you'll profit around 2.8 to 3 mil per hour. Then at level 29, you're looking at 2 to 2.5 mil an hour, depending on your fail rate. So still pretty good at the 2, 2.5 mil per hour at level 29, the lowest level. And your levels are going to be going up pretty fast. So if you start at level 29, by the time you do an hour or two, you're probably going to be close to like level 50 plus. So once you hit that 60, your GP will increase increase and so will how many you catch per hour so pretty good for such low level looking at stealing goblin cave wires from the wire machine in dorgish khan now to do this method, the requirements are level 44 thieving, and then you also need the death to Dorgashun quest complete, which doesn't have too high of requirements for this quest. These are located near the furnace in the southeast 
corner of Dorgish Khan. And you won't need to bring anything with you, you'll just have to go to the cave goblin wire machine. Now all you have to do for this method is basically click on the cave goblin wire machine to steal the wires every 6 seconds when it spawns. Now sometimes you will be stunned so watch out for that, it won't really deal any damage though, and just keep clicking and you will steal another wire. It's a very simple method to do, you can either just wait 6 seconds to click every time or just spam click while watching a movie or something. Now looking at our profit for this method, it took me around 4-5 to five minutes to get an inventory of Goblin Cave Wire, which you can bank pretty quickly at the bank up north, or you can use magic notepaper if you are really lazy. Now the profit per inventory was 204k GP as a wire sold for over 7k each instantly. I didn't have to wait at all for them to sell. This makes the profit per hour 2.5 mil to 3 million GP, semi AFK clicking in one spot and with very low requirements. I think this is a pretty good method for you guys to try out. Alright, so now we're done with the low level money making methods for this video and we're going to be moving on to the medium level money making methods for the ultimate money making guide. So let's get started on the med level methods. So the first method we are going to look at is making unfinished toad flax potions with the scroll of cleansing. For this method, you will need level 49 herb lore and also have a scroll of cleansing unlocked from dungeoneering. This scroll costs 20,000 dungeoneering tokens and also requires level 49 dungeoneering. This scroll makes it so you have a chance a herb will be saved when making unfinished potions. This should save you a herb every 10 potions or so you make. Since we are making unfinished toad flax potions, this will make you quite a bit of money in profit. So all you need to start this method out is some money. You don't need too much, 5 mil or so can get you started. And you can always sell your unfinished potions and buy more if you don't have enough money to buy a ton at a time. I also recommend highly to use a portable well to increase your profits as this will save you quite a bit of herbs as you can make double potions. I recommend going to the portables world and to the lumbridge market to find free wells to use. If you want to buy your own however, that's fine and it shouldn't cut into your profit too much. So all you need to do for this method is really really chill is take out 14 herbs and vials of water. So the only thing you're gonna need to buy is your clean toad flax and vials of water. And you'll basically make a preset with 14 herbs and 14 vials of water, take them out, use them on the portable well, and you'll make unfinished toad flax potions. Since you have the scroll of cleansing, it should save you a fair bit amount of herbs if you're making these potions. So honestly, it's pretty nice because it's not super AFK, but you do AFK for about 15-20 seconds while you make the potions. Um, you will need to be somewhere that's close to a bank, like the Castle Wars bank chest, where you can put your portable well, or of course the Lumbridge market like I mentioned before. Uh, you can go there. If you have the botanist outfit, by all means wear it, but it's not something that's required for this method. Um, so when we started, this method cost me 10.53 mil for 1,000 herbs and vials. In total, I ended up making 1,156 unfinished potions in 21 minutes. This made me a profit of 1.43 mil in 21 minutes, which comes out to a little over 4 mil an hour with very little requirements. This is a perfect method if you're looking to make some quick cash while bank standing and happen to have the scroll of cleansing. The next method we are going to be looking at is casting fruit fall using the fruit bat summoning familiar. For this method you will need level 69 summoning and a few million GP starting cash. You'll need to buy fruit bat pouches, about 500 to 1000 fruit fall scrolls and about 40 spiritual summoning potions. 
I also bought some summoning renewal potions as they work quite well and they're not too expensive. Now, to do this method, you'll need to go to a place such as Edge or Castle Wars that has a bank that has a wide open area. It is also needed to turn on area loot as this will make it so much more easy to pick up the papayas, which is primarily what is going to be making us money using this method. I would also highly recommend that you bind your familiar special attack to your action bar as you'll be spamming this and then also spiritual prayer potions. So I would recommend putting your spiritual prayer potions on a key bind as well. Now it's pretty easy and chill. You just need to spam your cast button and when you run out of summoning points, drink a dose of your potions. This honestly wasn't too bad at all. I would just go to Edgeville, uh, you know, I wouldn't even have to look at my screen. I could just spam, um, you know, the special attack key. And, you know, maybe after like 45 seconds to a minute, I'd look back, drink some summoning potions to restore my summoning points and keep spamming the special familiar scroll. And then after a few minutes, I would pick up all the fruit, which I used area loot and I would just put it in the bank, maybe take out a few more summoning potions and just repeat. Now, this method, um, I went for about 20 minutes of casting Fruitfall, and in total, it cost me 880K. This is not too bad at all, and it looks like for one hour, it would cost you about 2.5 mil or so in supplies. Now we are going to look at all the fruit we got and see how much profit we made. I ended up picking up all the fruit because it was easier to just pick up everything with area loot. And surprisingly, the other fruit adds up to a decent few hundred K to our profit. But in total, we got 2.8 million GP worth of fruit in 20 minutes. This means we made just under two mil profit in a 20 minute span which comes out to just about 6 million GP an hour, only requiring level 69 summoning. This is honestly a really good method if you want to ground out some cash quickly. Just make sure no one is around and steals your papayas because I had a sneaky bugger come up and steal a few of mine. Is going to be killing Chaos Hand Cannoners and Dwarves for a chance at the Dragon Pickaxe and other good loot. For this method, you will need Forgiveness of a Chaos Dwarf quest done, and also I recommend level 70 Magic and Defense. Soul Split is also very nice here, but you don't need it. If you do have Soul Split, by all means, you should use it. It's insanely good. If not, just pray range and bring an inventory of food. Your trips may not last as long, but you will still get a good amount of kills. Recommended items are the Bone Crusher plus the Twisted Burn slash Horn Necklace from Dungeoneering. This allows so you need no prayer pots as the Bone Crusher and Necklace will automatically bury all the bones dropped and convert them to prayer points. This is very nice, but of course it's not technically needed as you can just bring prayer potions and use those, although that will cut into your profit just a bit. In terms of gear, just bring the best magic setup you can. It doesn't really matter too much as the things we're killing only have 1000 to 2500 health. So having a high tiered weapon and armor won't really affect your kills per hour too much. Of course, I recommend bringing at least a tier 70 weapon. Now, the strategy for this method is to kill as many chaos hand cannoners as possible. Make sure you focus on them, as they have a chance to drop the dragon pickaxe, but also can drop the hand cannon, which will make up a really good amount of our profit, as well as hand cannon shots. Another small tip I found out is to bring magic note paper, because the chaos creatures will drop a lot of muddy keys, which really add up since they're 11k each. I use magic note paper to note them all. Focus on using all your AoE abilities such as chain, Corruption Blast, Tsunami, etc. to clear the mobs as fast as possible. Focus on the hand cannoners, and then once they are all dead, you can kill the Chaos Dwarves and Dwogers while you wait for them to respawn. But the main two creatures we want to focus on is the hand cannoners first, and then the Chaos Dwarves. Overall, this was a really chill method. 
I ended up doing it for the full hour and actually enjoyed it quite a bit. There's always that chance you have for the dragon pickaxe, but the normal loot really adds up as well. In one hour, I got three hand cannons and a ton of muddy keys, and some other good drops like spirit weed seeds. This all added up to 3.1 mil in the hour without even factoring in the chance for the dragon pickaxe. I did also get unlucky with my hand cannons. I should have had at least four or five based on the drop rates. So this is a picture of how much money you're supposed to expect while getting 520 kills an hour, including the dragon pickaxe drop chance. However, I was getting well over 520 kills an hour because I was really focusing on using my AoEs effectively. So this profit could be driven up even more. I suspect this is a nice four to five mil an hour, including the dragon pickaxe factored in. It's a really nice change of scenery and I will definitely be back to try to get that dragon pickaxe. All right guys, so this next method is gonna be way more AFK for all my people that love AFK methods. So the method is gonna be making Sophonim Slayer Dungeon teleport tablets in your player owned house. Now for this method, you will need level 40 construction and a lectern in your house. You will also need the Jack of Spades quests with Menaphos unlocked and you will need tier four Menaphos reputation. Not much requirements, I would say the biggest is the Menaphos reputation. A butler also helps you unnote the soft clay in your house, but you can totally just bank and teleport back as well. So this method is very, very simple. You will first need to have a lectern in your house, and then you will buy law runes and soft clay. You will need two times the amount of law runes than you do clay. So for example, if you're making a thousand tablets, you will want 2000 law runes and a thousand soft clay. After this, you go to your player and house and you'll click on your lectern and make the Sophonim Slayer Dungeon teleports. Now the reason we are making these tablets is because they go for well over 4k each and are used for clues and also to easily get to the dungeon for Slayer. When you make these, you can AFK a full inventory for about two minutes or so, which is really, really nice for people that like doing other stuff like watching YouTube or Netflix while playing RuneScape, because this is totally a method that allows you to do that and still makes you some decent money. Now, after you finish your tablets, you can either go bank and teleport back to your house, or what I did was just have the monkey butler unnote my soft clay for me so I could continue making tablets. This method was really AFK and super chill compared to the last method. So now let's see how much money we ended up making doing this method. All right guys, so I ended up spending around 250K on supplies, which was just the law runes and the soft clay that I used. And I ended up making 168 teleport tablets in around 10 minutes or so. So we ended up getting 821k worth of Sophnum Slayer Dungeon Teleports. And if we subtract what we spent, this comes out to 571k profit in around 10 minutes or a little over 3 mil, almost 3.5 mil GP per hour, which I think is really, really good considering just how AFK a method like this is. I'm going to be using Super Glass Make the Lunar Spell to turn buckets of sand and soda ash into molten glass. Now, if we look at the requirements for this method, you're gonna need level 77 magic, and you'll also need lunar spells unlocked from the lunar diplomacy quest. You'll need a little GP and a few pieces of gear, but not too expensive, so pretty simple requirements. Now we're gonna look at the gear and inventory. For gear, you're going to need an elemental battle staff. This is around 2 million GP, and it's gonna save you a ton of money while using the spell. You will also benefit from a rune pouch if you can afford it to put your astral runes in. However, it's not needed as you can just make 13 glass per inventory instead of 14 while using the rune pouch and the rune pouch will give you like 5% more speeds. But like I said, it's not needed. So for your inventory, you'll want 14 soda ash and 14 buckets of sand in there and make a preset. So basically, you'll want to get the buckets of sand and soda ash off the GE 
and you want to make sure that you have two astral runes per cast you will be doing. So then after you have all your supplies, you'll want to put the super glass make spell on your one keybind. And then you'll want to save your preset to the first preset. Then what you'll do is you'll hit the one key twice, click on the bank and repeat. So basically you'll click the one key to withdraw your preset, click one to super glass make, and then click on the bank and repeat. You can get a really fast rhythm doing this. And I was surprised how I managed to cast a 190 casts in around 6 minutes or 1900 casts per hour, which is 25,000 plus molten glass per hour. Now keep in mind you also get extra molten glass sometimes, and on average you'll get around 1.3 to 1.4 molten glass per soda ash and bucket of sand. So if we look at what I made, I did 2500 ash and sand combos in 6 minutes. This ended up making me 3248 molten glass, and I got an extra 748 molten glass from doing that. So in total, the molten glass that I made was worth about 2 million GP, and yes, it did instant sell on the GE for this price. Now we spent about 900k on the supplies, so this brings our total profit to 1.1 mil in 6 minutes or over 10 million GP per hour, which is insanely good for these mid-level requirements. On the next method is going to be crafting, enchanting, and stringing botanist amulets. Now for this method, you're going to need level 34 crafting and level 27 magic. However, level 80 magic can be used if you want some more magic XP to go along with this method, but it is not needed. Now family crest quest is required to have silver bars in your metal bank. So for the gear and inventory, you won't need any gear, but for your inventory setup, you'll want 28 cut jades for crafting the amulets at a furnace. And then you'll also need silver bars in your metal bank. Then for the second step, which is stringing your amulets, you'll want either to use the string jewelry spell for a more AFK option or have 14 balls of wool and 14 amulets in your inventory. And finally, for enchanting, you'll want cosmic runes either in your inventory or a rune pouch and then a full inventory of amulets. Now to do this method, I went to the Port Phasmatis furnace, but the Edgeville furnace also works well or any furnace close to a bank. You'll first want to do the first step, which is to smelt your jade into jade amulets unstrung. After you do this, you can either string jewelry with the lunar spell, or you can bank the amulets and use the balls of wool on them to string them that way. After you string your amulets, you'll then want to enchant your strung amulets into botanist amulets. It's as easy as that, you'll need some cosmic runes for enchanting and an elemental staff. I found this method not too bad and most of it was AFK, especially smithing and stringing. For supplies, of course, you'll need silver bars, cut jades, cosmic runes, and then either astral runes for stringing using the spell or balls of wool. So honestly, this method was not too bad and like I said, it was pretty AFK. I think I would AFK for around a minute for, you know, smelting things and then 30 seconds or so for enchanting. So pretty AFK. Now if we look at our profit, I ended up fully making 200 amulets in around 15 minutes. This comes out to around 1.45 million GP and I spent around 550k on supplies, so 900k profit in 15 minutes or about 3.5 mil to 4 mil an hour depending on the attention you're paying. Alright guys, so now we are going to be getting into the high level money making methods for this ultimate money making guide and trust me there are quite a few that i've done so let's get into it keep in mind all these gp per hours have been updated if anything specifically has changed i try to look and update it accordingly pleading the fight kiln it's a mini game with waves of monsters that once you complete it you'll be able to get a choice between a kiln cape or an uncut onyx. Now, with the new boss Raksha coming out, onyxes have gone up a lot in price and are currently sitting at almost 4 million GP, 
which means the fight kiln is very, very good money. The suggested skills for this method is 90 plus combat stats, although you can do it with a bit lower. You just probably won't get as fast of completions. 95 prayer for soul split and turmoils are highly recommended. 96 herblor for overloads are also highly recommended. Ripper demon is very useful, however you can use a yak if you would like. And if you want to use the obsidian armor, you need 80 smithing and you'll need the brink of extinction quest. Now I'm not going to get into every wave of the fight kiln as this guy would be an hour long. But if you are decently experienced as a PVMer, it is honestly pretty easy. This is the gear setup I brought. However, you can bring your best tribrid setup. You do need all styles for the fight kiln. You can also use obsidian armor for tribriding. This is now my inventory setup. I brought a ripper demon as well because it does tons of damage and I also brought lots of spiritual prayer potions so my ripper demon could really help me speed through the kiln. I will leave a link to fight kiln strategies in the description. It may look daunting but if you have the recommended stats and some decent gear you should be able to get through it in a breeze relatively easily. So now let's get into what the loot looks like and the money per hour. So this was my first time doing the fight kiln in quite a while, and I really didn't have a good strategy. However, I found out you don't really need a ton of strategy and you can brute force your way through the fight kiln. I soul splitted the entire time almost, and I found it relatively easy. The only wave I had trouble with was wave 28 with all the dills, because you have to break their armor, and I did sign on this wave because I ran in when I shouldn't have. But all in all, this run was completed in 26 minutes, but it was far from optimal. But for 26 minutes, I got one uncut onyx, which sells for about 3.9 mil on the GE right now. If we assume two runs per hour, that is an easy 7.8 million GP an hour. But honestly, with practice, I think you could easily get it down to 20 minute or so runs. And for three runs an hour, that's a huge 11.7 mil profit in the hour. As for supplies, I hardly used any. Armor and weapon charges and some prayer potions were about it. Maybe a few hundred KGP in Ripper Demon Scrolls. The next method we are going to get into is one of my favorites. This is killing corrupted scorpions while on a slayer task. I also showcased the GP per hour without being on a slayer task, so don't worry. You'll be pretty surprised at that as well. The only requirements you'll need for this is level 88 Slayer, and I would say probably 80 plus combat stats. Overloads and Soul Split are also a plus. You also need completion of Itchulin's Little Helper to access the Corrupted Scorpions. The gear I used was just my best mage setup I had, as these scorpions are quite weak to the Inquisitor's staff. However, I have seen tons of people killing these with melee as well, and use things like Elder Rune 2 h Swords, Scythes, etc. So whatever the best gear you have for either magic or melee will work just fine. Something else I will mention that makes this method much better is Vital Spark Drop Enhancers and Softening Slayer Dungeon Drop Enhancers. These can be bought for Dungeoneering tokens from the Dungeoneering Reward Shop. And when vital sparks are dropped, they will be doubled. And the softenim drop enhancer increases the rate for keys to the crossing to drop for you. These are definitely worth it as a way to convert your dungeoneering tokens to extra GP. As a max player, I had over a million dungeoneering tokens that I had no use for, so I had no problem buying a bunch of these for this method. They aren't needed, but they are really nice for extra profit. As for my inventory, it's really simple. I just brought overloads, prayer renewals, and super restores. Enhance Excalibur, and then I use the vampirism aura as well. And of course, my drop enhancers. You will also need feathers of Mott, as one of these is consumed every time you kill a corrupted creature. These won't cut into your profit too much though, so don't worry. Also, an aggression potion is needed. This method was so AFK, 
I just used Revolution++ Plus Plus and stood in the middle of the room and killed these so fast. Soul splitting the entire time, I didn't need any food and it was really, really easy. On average, I was getting over a thousand kills an hour. I did this method for an entire Slayer task and it took me about 15 minutes to complete the task. I killed 270 creatures. I ended up getting nine vital sparks and three keys to the crossing, which was actually below the drop rate for being on task, so I got a bit unlucky, but still in total, I made 3.7 mil GP. I spent 405k on feathers and about 150k in supplies. This comes out to 3.2 mil GP in 15 at minutes, or over 12 million GP per hour. But of course, I know this is on task and the key to the crossing rate drop is much lower off task. So I decided to do this again, but with no Slayer task. After doing this for another 15 minutes off task, I ended up killing about the same amount of scorpions. I spent the same 550k in supplies, but I made a total of 2 million GP. This comes out to about 1.5 million GP in 15 minutes or 6 mil in an hour. Which keep in mind, this means you can stay here basically forever AFKing with no Slayer task. You could sit here all day and kill these and make over 6 mil an hour. Or if you have a lot of Slayer points saved up, you can make even double that. This method also re doesn't require anything like trim masterwork or tier 92 weapons. Tier 80 or tier 90 weapons will work just fine. It is running the Anachronia Agility course for Codex Pages. This method requires level 85 agility, but boosts can be used. Bladed Dive and Surge are highly recommended to speed things up, although not needed. The mobile perk is also very handy for decreasing your Surge cooldown times. You will need the Anachronia base camp unlocked. So basically all this method involves is running laps of the Anachronia Agility course. It's very simple. You start at one end of this giant course and run all the way to the other. You may get lost at first as the course is so huge, but the easiest way I found to stay on course is to follow the white dinosaur prints as this will show you exactly where to go for the next obstacle. As for the gear, there's really not much to it. Although you should have a tier 3 luck ring to get maximum codex pages, as well as the agility skill cape could help you not fail any obstacles if you do have 99 agility. I did bring dual wield melee weapons for bladed dive, and also power bursts of acceleration potions are nice to help you surge and bladed dive much more. The reason this course is so profitable is because every lap of the course you complete you get 10 codex pages, which can be converted to the double surge codex and be sold on the grand exchange. With tier three luck, you will get an average of 12 codex pages per lap on average. Laps on average took me about seven minutes, which I know can be done a bit faster. The RuneScape wiki shows it's possible to get nine to 10 laps an hour or six minute laps. In total, the Double Surge Codex page averages out to be over 70,000 GP per page. In the hour, I ended up getting 102 Codex pages, which comes out to 7.2 mil GP in the hour, while also getting decent agility experience. This method is a really nice option to train agility while making very good money. So this first method that we are going to look at is going to be crafting lava runes. For this method, you're going to need level 90 rune crafting. You'll need 93 summoning because it is recommended for Abyssal Titan for maximum profit, but technically you don't need it, as well as 82 magic. In terms of unlocks, you'll need small through massive rune crafting pouches. You'll need Lunar Diplomacy completed for NPC contact to repair your rune pouches and a little bit of starting cash. Now, this method involves crafting lava runes at the fire altar. 
To do this method, this is the inventory you will need, which is basically just all your rune pouches, pure essence, and earth runes. As for the equipment setup, you will need a wicked hood to be able to get into the altar, binding necklace, elemental battle staff, or some sort of staff so you have runes available for magic imbue and repair rune pouch. I have a rune pouch with astral, law, and cosmic runes. Ring of Duelings are important for teleports to the Fire Altar, however I am using my Passage of the Abyss which already has Rings of Dueling in it. Any runecrafting outfit is also good to have. Now this method also requires you to set up an ability bar for faster inventories and faster runs. This is the ability bar that I use. As you can see I have all my rune pouches binded. I have my Passage of the Abyss binded for quick tellying. I also have my Magic Imbue spell binded and my Repair Rune Pouch. You will also want an Abyssal Titan full of pure essence. So how you will do this method is you start off at your closest bank area. I chose the Max Guild and you with withdraw your preset. You will then fill up your small, medium, and large rune pouches with your ability bar. You will then withdraw your preset again. You will fill up your huge rune pouch. Then you will withdraw your preset again, fill up your massive rune crafting pouch, and then you will withdraw one more time and teleport to the duel arena. Once you teleport to the duel arena, you will surge up to the fire altar. And once you are inside the fire altar, you'll press your magic imbue and make sure to use your earth runes on the altar to make lava runes. After this, you'll tele back to your nearest bank and just repeat. All in all, this method was pretty good. And I made about 2.2 mil worth of lava runes in just under 10 minutes. This equates to over 13 mil GP per hour just by runecrafting. However, judging by the wiki, you can go even faster and if you were to get 170 trips per hour, this would total over 16 million GP per hour. This is a nice method to do if you are higher runecrafting and want to make some decent money as this is equivalent to higher level slayer creatures or even some mid tier bosses in terms of money per hour. I highly recommend trying this method out if you have the stats and good luck with your runs. Now the next method we are going to talk about is not one that you are going to be able to do constantly, but a really good method if you have a lot of magical beans built up at player owned farms. I know a lot of people have tons of beans built up with nothing to do with them. And this is going to show you how to convert them into a ton of money and pretty insane GP per hour. Now this method will be farming spirit weeds with supreme growth potions. So yes, you will need magical beans built up to be able to do this method. But this can make you a ton of money. Like I said earlier, this method is not meant to be done constantly, seeing as you need magical beans. So the requirements for this method are 36 farming, but 99 is recommended for the farming cape perk. 25 dungeoneering is recommended to have the scroll of life to save you some seeds, which really adds up as we're using spirit weeds. As for items, the farming outfit is recommended along with magical secutors, any green fingers aura you have, the scroll of life unlocked, grace of the elves is optional, but it is used for faster banking. So first what you're going to want to do is go to your player owned farm store and buy Supreme Growth Potions Leafy. These will cost 1000 beans each and for one hour of this method you will need about 80 potions. So for my equipment setup I use the full master farmer outfit, Grace of the Elves, and the farming cape. For my inventory, you'll want to bring Ultra Compost equivalent to how many growth potions you have, and Spirit Weed Seeds that are also equivalent to how many growth potions you have. Juju Farming Potions are also highly, highly recommended to increase your profit a ton. Now for this method, all you need to do is go to any herb patch, you will then pour your Ultra Compost on the patch, you will plant your Spirit Weed Seed, You'll use your growth potion 
and then you'll pick your herbs and just repeat. It's honestly a super chill method for how much money you make per hour. And as long as you have beans built up and you don't mind spending them, this can be a great method to get a big increase in cash every once in a while. Now I ended up spending about 2.4 million GP, which was spent on spirit weed seeds and ultra compost. However, but with my scroll of life, I did end up saving five spirit weed seeds, so this will also be included in the price check. In total, we made over 7 million GP in about 10 minutes of doing this. In terms of profit, that is 4.6 million GP profit in only 10 minutes. This equates to well over 27 million GP per hour. This method is absolutely amazing if you have tons of beans that you don't mind cashing out for some sweet GP. Okay guys, so the last method of this video is going to be a combat method, and it's going to be killing lava strike worms. This method does require a bit of risk, however there are ways which you can essentially risk nothing and do this method. This method requires level 94 slayer to be able to kill lava strike worms. You'll need the Wilderness Elite Diaries are highly recommended so you can note your Searing Ashes, or if you don't have the Wilderness Elite Diaries, you can use level 108 Archaeology and use the Death Note Relic to note the ashes as well. So you'll want either one of those, um, but of course either one will work. I think the Wilderness Elite Diaries might be a little bit easier to get. And then you will want level 90 range is recommended with tier 80 weapons at least is also advised. Now lava strike worms are actually one of the best slayer monsters to kill in game for consistent profit. The reason people don't kill them is because they're scared because it's in the wilderness. But it really isn't that scary and I haven't died here I don't think ever. In terms of gear setups this is the gear I personally use. However, if you want to decrease risk in case somehow you get sculled, which is very unlikely, I have never accidentally sculled at all um, while doing Lava Strike Worms or anything in the wilderness, turn your auto retaliate off, do not fight back if you're scared of getting sculled, and it, there really shouldn't be any way you get sculled. However, I know it can happen, so you can bring a cheaper weapon or you can even find the Hellfire Bow, which works extremely well for killing Lava Strike Worms, and you'll basically have um, nothing to lose on death. In terms of inventory, this is my setup. Most notably, if you just need prayer, food, and a beast of burden, like a yak or tortoise to bring food in, and I actually have a very in-depth Lava Strike Worm guide that I will link in the description and at the end of the video, um, for you guys, if you want a super detailed guide on how to kill Lava Strike Worms with the least risk and how to escape PKers. So I'm not going to go into it all here as I, you know, that's like a 12 minute video that's super in depth. So I will link that in the description in case you want um, some more methods and tips. But honestly, Lava Strike Worms are very chill to me. I don't think I've died here ever, and it's very easy to escape PKers if you end up getting attacked. But the easiest thing to do is just not bring much risk. Then if you die, you really won't lose anything but your loot. I really enjoy killing these as Searing Ashes are so consistent and make you a ton of money. However, there is a chance for rare drops that can increase your profits even more. Now in 10 minutes, I ended up making almost 2 million GP, which equates to about 12 million GP per hour. However, I didn't get any huge Searing Ash drops as Lava Strike Worms can sometimes drop 5 Searing Ashes, which really adds up, and I didn't get any rare drops. If we assume 120 kills per hour and factor in rare drops over time, you're looking at over 16 to 20 mil GP per hour at Lava Strike Worms, making them one if not the most profitable Slayer monsters in game and a very very good choice for making a ton of cash. The next method which is basically using muddy keys at the lava maze on the muddy chest. 
Now for this method, the requirements are going to be level 96 summoning, so you can use a pack yak and you'll need some GP to buy the keys and a little bit of time to wait for them to buy. That's basically it. But 96 summoning is very important to get the most GP per hour. And just like the mud rune method, you can only buy 100 keys per 4 hours, so you'll either need to get a friend to buy you some or leave an offer in the GE for a few days and then, can, then you can do a bunch of this method at once and make some good money. Now as for the inventory setup for this method, you'll want to wear a ring of wealth, and I had a wilderness sword so I could teleport close to the lava maze for the first time, but you can easily walk there as you'll only be going there once. Then you'll want to fill your inventory and make a preset with muddy keys filling your inventory and also your pack yak to be filled with muddy keys as well. Now just a note, this is in the wilderness so do this at your own risk. However, I don't think many PKers hang out at the lava maze and I haven't ever been PK'd while doing this. You'll want to also possibly fill up your prayer points or wear some cheap dehyde armor because there are two lesser demons that can get a bit annoying at the muddy chest, but what I ended up doing was just eating a food or two when I banked. So what you'll want to do for this method is run to the lava maze in the wilderness, and then you'll want to cut the first web and run through the lava maze. You'll then want to cut the second web that you get to, and then you'll basically be at the muddy chest and be able to loot it. Now the muddy chest can give you a ton of different loot including coins, bloodweed seeds, dragon longswords, battle staffs, and rarely an ancient warrior's equipment patch. Now I actually really enjoyed this method and ended up doing it pretty fast. So after you loot all your chests for one inventory, you'll then want to run back through the lava maze and bank with the banker who is usually found west of the lava maze. You'll then want to take out more keys, fill your yak up with keys, and repeat. So in total, it took me around 15 minutes to loot 200 muddy keys. I did get really lucky and I ended up getting an Ancient Warriors equipment patch, which I believe is pretty rare. You should get one per 2k keys total, so we got it really early. So I'm going to show the loot with that, but I won't be counting it into the GP per hour calculation. So now we're going to take a look at our loot. So looking at our loot, we got around 3.8 million GP in 200 keys. This took us 15 minutes. So we spent 1.85 mil on the keys. So in total, we made 2 million GP profit in 15 minutes or around 8 mil GP per hour. However, we did get an Ancient Warriors equipment patch, which turns our profit more into like 11 million GP in 15 minutes. However, we did get really lucky and on average, you should get an equipment patch every two and a half hours or so of looting these keys, which should add 3 million GP to your profit per hour in the long run. So a good GP per hour rate to expect over the long haul for this method is about 12 million GP per hour, which I think is honestly really good for how chill this method is. Of course it's a little risky, but the most GP you're going to lose if you die is around 500k in keys, which means we'd have to die like 20 times in the hour to lose our money. So in all honesty, you should be pretty safe. It is going to be casting Ophidian Incubation and turning normal eggs into cockatrice eggs. Now for this method, you're going to need level 63 summoning, so a bit lower level requirements for this method, but you will need around 10 million GP. As for your inventory and gear, you'll want to have a Spirit Cobra pouch and then Spirit Cobra scrolls in your familiar. You'll want an inventory full of eggs with one or two spiritual prayer potions which you will need to buy as well. So to do this method, what you'll want to do is set your familiar action to a special move. And you'll want to put the special move on your action bar somewhere that you can easily hold down, like the one key. Then you'll want to hold down that button and click on the eggs in your inventory. It may take a bit to get used to, but eventually you'll get into a nice rhythm. You'll also want to keep track and look at your familiar special move points and make sure that you drink a dose of your spiritual prayer potion whenever your familiar special attack bar moves below 30. You'll then bank and just repeat this, turning your normal eggs into the cockatrice eggs. It's kind of click intensive, but being able to just hold down a key and click makes it a bit nicer. 
Now in total I made 300 eggs to test and it only took 7 minutes which comes out to around 24 to 2500 eggs per hour and looking at the profit, looking at what we spent, we spent a little over one mil mostly on the eggs, spiritual prayer pots and stuff like that. And we made about 1.8 mil in the cockatrice eggs, which means we made 700k profit in seven minutes, which is around five to six million GP per hour. And this method doesn't have as high of requirements as the others in this video, but it's still a very good method and one that I recommend checking out. And the nice thing is the GE limits are pretty high for these items, so you can buy a ton of supplies at once and just do this as much as you want. It's going to be cleaning grimy herbs with the 99 Herbal Arcade perk. For this method, the only requirements you'll need is of course level 99 Herblor for the Herblor skill cape, and a decent cash stack between 50 and 100 million GP. So the way this method works is the Herblor skill cape allows you to clean your whole inventory of herbs in one click. So what you'll want to do is set up a preset with all your grimy herbs and wear your Herblor skill cape. You will then want to put the Herblor cape on your action bar as the same hotkey as your preset. I use the number 1. This will allow me to click the number 1, withdraw my preset, and then click the 1 key again to clean my inventory of herbs with the Herblor skill cape. Then I click the bank and repeat. You can clean herbs so fast with this method. It's really easy also once you get into a rhythm. So for finding the right herbs to clean, you will of course need to check the prices. Do not just buy the herbs without checking how much a grimy and clean herb of that type buys or sells for, and then you want to multiply it out to see how much profit you will make and determine if it's worth it for you. Prices can fluctuate, but you should be able to find some herbs that will work well if you look hard enough. I ended up buying 10,000 grimy lantidimes for 82.7 mil GP. Of course there is also a buy limit of 10,000 grimy herbs per 4 hours. So to be able to do this method for longer, you will either have to buy your herbs over time for a few days, or have some friends or alternate accounts buy you herbs. Whatever works for you. And as you'll see in the next clip, it is so worth it. Alright, so now we're going to look at the profit. I cleaned all 10,000 herbs in just about 10 minutes of time, and it was really easy once I got into the rhythm of things. So I paid 82.7 mil GP for my grimy lantidimes. I didn't slow buy them either, I instant bought them all. I ended up selling them over time for 8,549 GP each, or 85.5 mil GP. It didn't take too long, maybe about 30 minutes. And I made a 2.8 million GP profit, and it only took me 10 minutes. This comes out to over 16 million GP per hour. Of course, you could make even more if you had patience and slow bought all the herbs and also slow sold them. I'd put this method very easily at 15 to 20 mil an hour if you have the funds and can get access to a lot of grimy herbs, but I think it is well worth the effort. Alright guys, so the next method is going to be another herblore based method, which is going to be collecting cave nightshade and turning them into weapon poisons. To do this method, you're going to need level 82 herblore, 97 farming, grace of the elves, and a scavid map from the Watchtower quest. To start this method, it's going to consist of two parts. The first part is going to be collecting the Cave Nightshade, and the second is going to be turning it into potions. To start collecting Cave Nightshade, you will need this equipment setup, which is basically just teleports, Grace of the Elves with porters in it. Then you'll want in your inventory a scavid map which is obtained during the Watchtower quest. You can get this back by speaking to the guard at the very end of all the bridges at Gutnoth. You will also need a light source. Seer's headband can save you some inventory space. You will then want to go to this marker on the map and go into this dungeon entrance. You will then just pick up Cave Nightshade and your Grace of the Elves will bank it for you. Now, this can be done in two ways. AFK, or hopping worlds. 
You can either pick these Nightshade and then sit there AFK and you can just let them respawn, which is really nice if you, you know, want to AFK something. Or if you prefer to do things faster, you can hop worlds and constantly pick them while hopping worlds. After this, you will need to take your cave nightshade and make them into weapon poison. For this, you will need to buy vials of coconut milk and poison ivy berries. For equipment, I recommend the botanist outfit and the botanist amulet, and also it is highly recommended to use a portable well. Then you will just put your cave nightshade into your coconut milk and then put the poison ivy berries into the unfinished potion you get from that and then that will make a weapon poison. It's a really simple method, and if you'd like, you can spend hours sitting there collecting cave nightshade, and then once you get a ton, you can all at once make it into weapon poison to get some really good herbler XP and some nice profit. Or you can do it the way I did, where I spent about half my time collecting the cave nightshade, and then I spent the other half making potions. So now that we have that out of the way, we're going to go and see how much profit I made. Alright, so in total it took me only around 4 minutes to collect 100 Nightshade, but I was using the hopping world method so I was constantly hopping worlds and picking it. And then it took me another 4 minutes to make them into potions. So this took me around 8-9 to nine minutes in total, somewhere near there. So I did save quite a bit of supplies with all my botanist outfit, my well, and my botanist amulet, so I ended up with more potions. In total, this is how much we made. It cost us 1.7 million supplies, and after selling the potions on the GE, we made 1.3 million GP profit in around 8 minutes, or over 10 million GP per hour. And the thing I didn't even mention is this is a great method for herblore training too if you want to make money. You can get around 150 to 200k Herblore XP an hour, and this will make you tons of money with just a bit of effort. So if you really want to level up your Herblore, you could go and pick these Nightshades for a whole day, and then the next day you could come and just spend all day making them into potions, and you'll be training your Herblore, getting some decent XP, and also making some really good money. So all in all, this is around 8 to 10 mil GP an hour, depending on what method you use to pick the nightshades, and I think it is a really good method considering all the XP you get as well. So the first method we are going to be doing is excavating artifacts, disassembling them to turn them into historic and classic components, and finally make those into crates and sell for profit on the GE. For this method, you will only need level 5 archaeology, but to make this any good, you will want at least level 80 to 90. You'll also need 20 invention. I recommend having an Elder Rune Matic or Imkondo Matic fully perked out. This method gets better based on the archaeology gear and upgrades you have. So the higher archaeology level you are, and the more archaeology upgrades that you have, the better this method will be. For my gear setup for this method, I am using the full archaeology outfit, although the master outfit is by far the best. I am also using an Incondo Matic with Fortune 3 and Hone 6. You should use the best Matic that you have. I am also using Grace of the Elves with Signs of the Porters to bank materials. And then I also have Luck of the Dwarves, but this can be replaced with the Ring of Whispers. As for my inventory, I just have the auto sifter, which is super nice for turning your soil into materials and then your porters will just bank them instantly. However, you can bring a soil box and just bank the soil when it's full. The water fiend pouch is also very good because we will be extracting so many artifacts that the water fiend pouch will make it so there is a chance that the water fiend can double them for you. So it's really good to bring. So, to start off this method, you'll want to go to the Caradet dig site, which is the first dig site you ever unlock. And you'll want to go to the first excavation site that you unlock, which only requires level 5 archaeology, the Venator Remains. What you'll want to do is just excavate these remains for artifacts. If you're level 90 archaeology, like I mentioned, you should easily get these super, super fast. 
Now, this method can be as AFK or click intensive as you want. The more click intensive it is, meaning you follow the time sprite around, the more artifacts and more money you'll make per hour. However, if you are AFK, you can still make a good amount of money per hour as well and just not follow the time sprite. So you'll just want to keep excavating remains, and when you have a full inventory of artifacts, just bank them at the bank chest nearby and keep repeating. It's really super, super simple. So now, once you've spent a bit of time collecting all your artifacts, it's now time to restore them. I will link a calculator in the description table below with all the materials you need to restore your artifacts, and you also will have collected some from excavating, so make sure that you keep that in mind. But you will also need to buy some, which we'll do now, and we'll factor the cost into the end profit. So now you'll just want to restore your artifacts, and then after you're done restoring them, you'll want to disassemble them for classic and historic components. After this, you'll want to go to an invention workbench and basically make these into crates of components. Now you may need some padded components, which are pretty simple to get and most of you probably have them, but if not, you can disassemble something like green dehyde bodies, which may cost a tiny little bit, but honestly not too much. And you can use this to make historic crates and classic crates. So in total, I spent around 30 minutes excavating artifacts and then five minutes restoring them. I got a total of a thousand historic components and 20 classic components. The classic components came out to around 480K for the 20. And then I sold a historic large crate that I made for 6.2 mil. This came out to 6.7 million GP in 35 minutes. However, we did spend around 2.3 million GP on supplies, which mean our profits in 35 minutes was 4.3 million GP or around 7.5 million an hour. I can see this method making you about 5 million GP per hour while you're AFK, all the way up to 8 or 9 mil per hour if you're focusing on the time sprite and have all the good gear. If you have the archaeology levels, this is a solid AFK money making method and can be extremely AFK when not following the time sprite and I highly recommend you try it out. Alright guys, so the next method we're going to be looking at is going to be charging empty divine charges at cursed energy in the wilderness. For this method, you are going to need level 101 Invention, 99 Divination, and 81 Summoning is recommended, but it's not needed. You'll also need to make a divine omatic. For equipment, you should use the full Elder Divination outfit with the Divination skill cape. I am also using Luck of the Dwarves and Grace of the Elves for Saren Spirits, as I'll keep these on if I die. However, if you don't feel safe, you can skip out on these, although there should be no way for you to get Skulled, as you won't be using any weapons or anything. Of course, you do need the Divine Omatic Vacuum, and keep in mind these are always lost on death, so if you lose your Divine Omatic when you die, you'll need to make another. You can, however, use an Energy Gathering Scrimshaw in your pocket slot, but I don't like to take the extra risk. You'll also want your divine omatic filled with empty divine charge, and then also have a nightmare muspa pouch as well. Now for your inventory, you'll just want to bring a bunch of food, phoenix necklaces, ceridomen brews, a little bit of prayer, and a teleport just in case someone attacks you. However, since you are destroying all cursed energy and memories into divine charges, that's the nice thing about this method is that you won't be automatically sculled at the curse energy and since you are in level 25 wilderness you can instantly tele out using the wilderness sword or amulet of glory. I recommend putting the wilderness sword on your bar so you can spam click and tele to Edgeville if you see a PKer. However with enough food it should be pretty easy to get away. I did not encounter any PKers while I was here testing this method. So for this method, all you have to do is basically set your divino magic to destroy energy and memories. Then you just harvest curse whips 
at the Wilderness Volcano, which can be gotten to easily from the Wilderness Lodestone. I did this for around 30 minutes and it was honestly really AFK. I didn't encounter anyone and I actually ended up getting 37 divine charges. This means in total we ended up spending around 915k for the empty divine charge and we made 3.6 mil worth of divine charges in 30 minutes, which comes out to a profit of 2.7 million GP in 30 minutes or 5.4 mil GP per hour, very, very AFK. All right, so the next method we are going to be looking at is killing smoke and hills. Now for this method, you're going to need 96 summoning for a pack yak, 73 agility, 76 slayer, 79 magic, 75 divination, 96 herblore for overloads, and 90 plus range. You will also need the Fate of the Gods quest completed. Soul Split and Turmoil are also highly recommended with at least tier 80 range weapons. You will also need a Shard of Zeros, which I will link on how to get back in the description in case you had lost yours. For my gear setup, I ended up using my best ranged armor and weapons, but something like Pernix and Ascensions or a Wyvern Crossbow works just fine. I also recommend Amulet of Souls since we'll be soul splitting or an EOF if you have one. I use Nightmare Gauntlets and Fleeting Boots and then I just have my Kiln Cape, Ascension Bolts, Luck of the Dwarves, and of course you need your Shard of Zeros on you so you aren't attacked by all the Nihils at once. In terms of Aura, you'll want to use Sharpshooter or the Reckless Aura for most kills per hour. I ended up using the Reckless Aura for this video. As for your inventory, you'll want a pack yak with winter storage scrolls. You'll need overloads, a bit of bruise and restores for restoring your prayer and your health. You can bring a little bit of food if you want. An enhanced Excalibur is also good for some free heals if you have it. And charming imp and the gold accumulator are also really nice to have. Now, to get to the Nihils, you'll want to go to the Eagle's Peak Lodestone and walk south until you get to the World Gate. You can also use your 6th age circuit to teleport there. Once you get to the world gate, you'll want to quick dial the world gate to Frenske and then travel to the pit. Once you're at the pit, you will stand in the middle and select summon Nihils for Slayer. Now make sure your shard of zeros is worn or you will be attacked when the Nihils spawn. Now the easiest Nihil you'll want to be killing is the smoke Nihil. You can kill the other Nihils, but their special attacks are a bit harder. The Smoke Nihil will just drain your stats, which your overloads will easily counteract. However, I will leave a link in the description to the other Nihil's attacks in case they get onto you or you want to kill them as well. But personally, I just kill the Smoke Nihil's and will only kill the others when they get onto me or they're super low health. Now, all you'll want to do is attack the Nihil's and it's very good to bleed them and then walk them around a little bit and then just threshold them down. You can also trap them in a corner and use things like bombardment to kill more of them at once. The smoke Nihils are weak to range so it should be pretty easy to kill them. In total with decent gear you should be looking at around 150 kills per hour up to 200 kills per hour on the higher end. You'll want to pick up everything and make sure to collect the Elder Charms as you'll need these for later. You'll also want to yak back all the Aviancy parts such as Aviancy Talons which are gotten from the Smoke Nihils and all the other Nihil parts. So these are what make you the money. This is your main source of money so make sure you're picking up the untradeable Nihil parts and yakking them back. Now after you finish killing the Nihils, now it is time to make your Nihil pouches. What you'll need is 150 Elder Energy per pouch, which you should have gotten quite a bit from killing the Nihils, but you probably will have to buy a bit more. You'll need your Aviancy Talons or whatever Nihil parts you got, an Elder Charm, and one empty pouch per Nihil pouch being made. So in 20 minutes, I ended up getting 14 Nihil parts and I went and I made 14 Nihil pouches. I made 12 smoke and two ice. 
I did have to buy around 200k worth of energy and then I just used the rest of the energy that I got as drops. So in total, we made about 3.9 million GP in 20 minutes. Of course, we spent around 200,000 GP on energies and another 100 to 150K on supplies. So I would say our total is around 3.5 million GP made in just about 20 minutes, which comes out to well over 10 million GP per hour. But keep in mind, I was using very good gear and killing mostly the Shadow Nihils pretty fast. I would say I got around 200 kills in the hour. This is an absolute great money making method that's going to make you 8 to 10 mil per hour if you have decent range gear, and it'll be even better if you have a Nihil Slayer task, so make sure to always do your Nihil Slayer task. And if you want to camp out and make some good money, Killing Nihils is a really, really good way. It's going to be killing Wyverns. Now for this method, you're going to need level 96 Slayer to kill these creatures. You'll also need level 96 Herblore for overloads and worm fire potions are also needed. You will need 90 plus combat stats because those are recommended for killing these at a decent speed. And 95 prayer for soul split and turmoils is also highly recommended. The upgraded bone crusher also makes things a lot easier, but it's not technically required. All right, so to get into the equipment setup, I am using full trip masterwork. However, you can use normal masterwork or something like Torva. I'm also using Lanakia Spear, but a Scythe, Drygores, Dragon Rider Lance all work well. Uh, you'll want obviously Luck of the Dwarves if you have it, your Slayer Helm, and wear your best cape. I also have a Scrimshaw Vampirism because this really helps keep your health up while you're killing these. And the best in slot gloves would be the Cinderbane gloves, but I personally didn't have them, so I used Masterwork. As for inventory, you'll need a Wormfire Potion to protect you from the Wyvern's Breath overload or stat boosting potions as well, and then you'll want prayer potions or super restores. The upgraded bone crusher is really good as it will pick up the wyvern bones for you. Magic note paper works well with this to auto pick up the bones and then note them yourself. I also bring an anti-poison which is needed because of the wyvern's breath, and a weapon poison because poison effects work great here. The spring cleaner is also really good for breaking down loot, and then the rest of your inventory should be filled with food. As for a familiar, I used a ripper demon, but you could bring something like a steel titan, or for longer trips, you could bring a beast of burden to carry supplies if you'd like to as well. So to get to the wyverns, you'll want to go to the ice dungeon and go to the regular wyverns. To get here, you could either walk from Port Serum and go down into the dungeon, or you can use your dungeoneering skill cape if you have it and teleport to the frost dragons and just walk a short way. Now when you get here, you'll see the room is pretty icy and the strategy to kill these wyverns is to basically drink all your potions, make sure you drink your wormfire potions so you know you have that protection and you'll go into the room and it'll start to get cold. Now wyverns will make you cold and you'll start to freeze and you'll take damage if you get to a certain cold percentage which you can see on your buff bar. Now there are fires around and if you light the fires and stand around them you'll start to warm up. I like to light these when I get to around uh, probably about 70% cold as you want to stay at around 50 to 60% cold to take the least damage. This is because if you become too warm, you'll start taking increased poison damage, and if you become too cold, you'll get stunned and take more damage as well. So the best course of action is to stay near that 50 to 60% sweet spot. And that's pretty much it. You just kill these guys and it's honestly pretty easy. Um, you can use protect from melee and use devotion if you want to take the least damage. You can try soul splitting but they do hit a bit hard. But if you can keep up your heals with soul split then of course you can use that. Don't forget to use an aura. Vampirism or supreme brawler are pretty good here. Use vampirism if you need more health and make sure you turn on your vampirism scrimshaw. So yeah it was pretty chill. I just used my bone crusher to have the bones sent to my inventory and just noted them with magic note paper. I also ended up getting a raptor key piece which was nice as well and I finished my task in about 12 to 15 minutes. Now we're going to take a look at the total loot. 
All right, so I killed about 50 wyverns for my task, which took me around 12 minutes. And the total loot comes out to 2 million GP, which is about 10 mil per hour. However, since you're on task, you have a chance to get the wyvern crossbow at a 1 in 2k drop rate, which the wyvern crossbow is fairly expensive at almost 80 mil. So you should get a wyvern crossbow in about 8 to 10 hours of killing these. So that would add up to an extra 8 million GP per hour hour which makes living wyverns upwards of 18 to 20 mil per hour while you're on a slayer task. I really enjoyed these and it was a nice change of pace from the usual slayer that I do. I also like the fact that I can get raptor key pieces and get big drops like the wyvern crossbow. Remember all the raids are on task so these would be about 10 mil per hour off task and upwards of 20 mil per hour on task. All right guys so the next slayer task we are going to be looking at is killing a soul devourers now there's a lot of soul devourer creatures you can kill and they all give pretty decent money however for this video i'm going to be focusing on the crocodile ox which require level 111 slayer now for this you'll want a few things you'll need 90 plus combat stats just like the last method and of course you'll need 96 herb lore for overloads and 95 prayer for soul split and turmoil are highly recommended for my gear i'll be using pretty much the exact same setup as the last method i'll be using full trim masterwork however normal masterwork or torva works just fine uh, cinderbane gloves are the best but i'm just using my masterwork gloves Amulet of Souls or Essence of Finality, a Scythe, Dragon Rider Lance, Lanakia Spear, or any other AoE melee weapon will work well too. Um, you'll want to make sure it's probably above tier 80 because if it's any lower you'll be having a bit of trouble. Uh, Luck of the Dwarves because we don't want to see any cheese and tomato bottas up in here. Um, you want a Vampirism Scrimshaw, it's basically a must to keep your health up. And then for Auras, you're probably going to want to use Vampirism, but you can use Brawler depending on if you can keep your health up or not, but I would just use a Vampirism. As for my inventory, I have Overloads and Aggression Potions. I also have a few Brews just in case, and then Restores for Prayer. You will then need Feathers of Mott for each Soul Devourer that you kill. I also bring along a Vital Spark Drop Enhancer and Soft Nim Slayer Dungeon Enhancer for the in key increased key to the crossing drop rate and you'll get double Vital Sparks. This will increase your profits a lot if you have the spare Dungeoneering tokens to buy these. You'll also want the Enhanced Excalibur for the free heals and then the rest of my inventory is just full of food. So killing these is pretty easy. You'll want to go to the Softnim Slayer Dungeon and head down to the Crocodile Ox. Basically, when you get there, you'll want to pray melee and sip your aggression potion and your overload. So for your abilities, you'll want to have an ability bar that prioritizes AoE abilities such as Quake, Hurricane, Meteor Strike, and things like that. You'll also want to use Devotion as much as possible. Whenever it is up, I would put it at the front of your Revolution Bar. You'll also want to use your Enhanced Excalibur as much as possible as well. So make sure you're using the Vampirism Aura and Scrimshaw to keep your health up as much as possible. But basically, you just want to sit in the middle of this arena and AoE the Crocodiles down while using your Devotion constantly. If you ever get too low health or you're finding yourself getting overwhelmed and need to eat, just move out a little bit or run away for a bit so you don't have them all on you but you also want to keep in mind that the crocodile ox have a special attack and they will slam their tail into you to hit you 3k through your prayer but they'll only do this after five auto attacks usually this is not a concern as you'll kill the crocodiles before it gets to that point that is why you need the higher level weapon because you need to be dealing out enough dps so for me, this method was a really nice and AFK method, and I did my task of 161 soul devourers in around 10 minutes. Now looking at the loot I received, I got one key to the crossing and 11 vital sparks, totaling with all the normal loot at about 3.3 million GP. This gives us over 20 mil an hour on task. 
However, I did get a bit lucky with the Vital Sparks, but I also got unlucky only getting one key to the crossing while being on task with Enhancers. So I think 20 mil per hour is pretty accurate while you're on task, and these are just a really great option overall as they give super good XP up to over 600k per hour. All right guys, so the final Slayer creature is going to be the Lost Grove creatures, specifically the Vine Crawlers. Now these are killed with range and they require 104 Slayer. You will want 90 plus combat stats and 95 prayer for turmoils and soul split as well as 96 herbler for overloads are recommended. So for the gear setup I am using ascension crossbows but just use your best range weapon tier 80 plus is recommended. I am also using serenic but pernix or anima core works just fine. I have range kiln cape, fleeting boots, nightmare gauntlets although cinderbane gloves are better as these are susceptible to poison. I use luck of the dwarves Essence of Finality or Amulet of Souls is good, and I'm also using Dragonstone but Criminal Bolts, but use whatever bolts or ammo you feel comfortable spending. For the aura, you can use a ranged damage aura, uh, but for more chill trips and for maintaining longer trips, you'll want to use the Vampirism aura. As for inventory, it's pretty simple. I'm using overloads with super restores to restore my prayer, and enhance Excalibur for free heals, a weapon poison because like I said poison works well on these and the rest of my inventory is going to be filled with food. Now to kill these you'll want to go to the Lost Grove past the Incandescent Wisp Colony and head to the Vine Crawlers on the map Northwest. So for killing these it's pretty simple. You just drink your overload and you'll want to pray magic. You'll want to prioritize using devotion when possible and vampirism aura should keep your health high. If you want you can always soul split flick if you start getting low on health or running out of food. Now these vine crawlers do have a special attack where they will shoot purple poison at you and deal a big hit of damage. This can be dodged by simply walking away from the purple smoke on the floor. However if you kill these fast enough you should shouldn't have much problems with that attack. All in all, this was just a chill method, just like the rest of the other methods that I've shown in this video, but I really enjoyed ranging them compared to using melee so much during Slayer. So if we take a look at the loot, in 15 minutes I got around 1 million GP in normal loot. Now you might be saying to yourself, this doesn't seem like a lot. Well, it isn't. The majority of our money coming from these creatures is going to be the money accounted for from the Cinderbane Gloves and Ancient Elven Ritual Shard drops, which are 80 mil and 15 mil respectively. They are both dropped at a 1 in 1500 drop rate per task. This means you should get Cinderbanes and an Ancient Elven Ritual Shard every 10 hours or so, which means your total GP per hour should come out to something like this. Now this is accounted for when you're doing 160 kills per hour, which is really good at 14 mil GP per hour. I really like this method because the XP is great, but I always love the chance of getting that rare drop like Cinderbane Gloves that are really going to increase your bank value. So when we look at the overview of the daily run, I made a graphic to show kind of like a table of contents. You'll be able to go to the link in the description to skip to each section that you'd like to use. Or you can watch the full video to see all the methods. First we have the modified helmets, which can make you some decent cash. After this we'll be looking at using the wicked hood to runecraft runes with your daily essence. Then we will be moving on to daily divine locations. After this we will be showing you how to do full criminal bolt runs and make a ton of money. Then we will be going on to making Vizwax with the Rune Goldberg machine. And then I will be showing you how to do the best full shop run including runes and more for maximum profit. Then finally we will be going into crystal standstone mining. And then lastly, we'll be looking at red sandstone mining for potion flasks to end off our daily run. Now this run should take you a total of 30 to 36 minutes and you should make around 7 to 10 mil profit per run. Of course, they, it may vary a bit judging by the prices at the moment, but you should be looking around there. Of course, feel free to mix in things like farm runs as well, and you'll be making a ton of money per day with very minimal effort. 
So without further ado, let's get into the first method and look at modified helmets. All right guys, so modified helmets are very simple. Basically, you can get modified attachments to add to your skilling outfit helmets. Uh, kind of like the farmer's hat, diviner's headwear, and more. Up to eight different modifier helmets for the eight skilling outfits. You can either earn these at the same place that you can earn the skilling outfits, or previously you could earn these from Treasure Hunter. Now, once you have these helmets, all you have to do for this method is right click your helmets and claim your items. Most notably, you'll get 50 coal from the blacksmith's helmet, 4 bird's nests from the farming hat, and 500 spirit shards from the shaman's hat, along with 35 soft clay from the artisan's bandana. There's a few more, and all together, this adds up to around 110k a day, and literally takes 30 seconds to a minute to do this. I highly recommend doing this every day if you have any of these helmets for some free money. All right, so next we're gonna look at rune crafting with the Wicked Hood. For this, all you'll need is of course a Wicked Hood and you'll need an Omni Talisman in it to get pure essence every single day. Now, the best rune to make is Cosmic, but there are others too like Blood, Nature, and Death. If you can't make Cosmic runes, those are some other good choices. All you need to do for this method is basically teleport to the altar you want to go to with your Wicked Hood, craft your runes, withdraw more essence from the hood, and then do this until you run out. It took me around one minute to do this, and I made a solid 130k. So just like the modified helmets, this is a great method to do for some quick cash every day. The next method we are going to look at is Divine Locations. For these divine locations, you can either make them yourself with divination or use ones that you may have gotten from your daily keys. You can also take from other people's divine locations. The best daily divine locations to use are the Divine Rocktail Bubble, Herb Patch, and Box Trap, which you may need 91 Herblor, 90 Fishing, and 77 Hunter to use, but of course there are also a bunch of lower level ones you can do for some decent money as well. So I recommend going to the portable worlds because the more people that take from your divine locations, the more money and loot you will get. So announce that you're putting down a divine location and people will come and take from it with you. Now be aware it will be laggy in these worlds. In total, I made around 300k worth of rocktails from doing my daily divine locations. It only took me about a minute, so this is a great thing to do every day to make some extra cash super super quick. Next, we are going to look at doing Bacrimnal Bolt Runs. For this method, you'll need 93 fletching and 85 woodcutting. You'll first go to Mommy Rimba in Edge and buy Bacrimnal Bolt Tips for 200 GP each. You'll then need to take these into the wilderness with you and go to each blood tree location and cut the logs. You'll then fletch them into shafts and then tip them into Bacrimnal Bolts. I recommend bringing this setup with a Lumberjack Aura and Beaver Familiar as it will highly increase the amount of logs you will get, honed on a crystal hatchet, and then having the woodcutting outfit is really, really good along with the Ring of Whispers. There are three locations in the wilderness, but also five more locations in the overworld. You can find these trees at these wilderness locations and then you can find the rest at these quest related locations. I will also put a link in the description to all the locations and how to get there and their requirements. So the general strategy is just to go and woodcut your bloodweed tree until it's out of logs. Then you will fletch them into shafts and then immediately into bolts. But there's a warning here. If you leave the bloodweed tree, Beware, your logs and shafts will disappear if they aren't tipped. So you must fletch your logs and you must tip them into Bacrimnal Bolts while you are still standing at the tree. I just went to each location and did this and it didn't take too long, maybe around 10 minutes in total. Overall, I made 3 million GP profit after subtracting the costs of the bolt tips, which is honestly an amazing daily moneymaker to do with this little effort. Next, we are going to look at making Vizwax with the Rune Goldberg machine. 
For this method, you will need level 50 runecrafting to access the runecrafting guild. You can do this method daily, and it entails turning three types of runes into viswax, which can be sold for a decent amount. I will leave a link in the description to a viswax discord, which will tell you the absolute best runes to use every day while doing this method. Now, once you get to the machine, all you have to do is put your runes in that are the best cost-wise for you, and then you will get viswax. In total, I spent around 300k in runes, which means I ended up making around 900k in profit in literally one minute of work. This is insanely good and you should be doing this every single day. This alone could pay for one of your monthly bonds for a minute of work each and every day. This is such a good method. Alright, so now we are going to look at a full shop run for money making. For this, you will need around 3 million GP to start. We will be buying runes and tons of other things. Now this is going to be the route that I personally go with. I first go to Edgeville and buy runes from the Mage of Zamorak. Then I go to the Mage Arena and buy all the runes there. After I do this, I'll teleport to Borthorp and buy runes at the Magic Shop, and then go to Varrock and buy runes at Aubrey's Rune Shop. After this, you'll go to the Port Serum Lodestone and go to Betty's Magic Emporium. And then from there, you'll go to the Void's Knight Outpost and go to the Magic Shop there, which you'll get to from the Port Serum ships. After this, you'll want to go to the Magic Guild, which will require 60 magic, and you'll buy the runes out there. You can get there fast by going to the Yanel Lodestone. Then, with Lunar Diplomacy completed, you'll head to Baby Yaga's house north of the Lodestone on Lunar Isle. After this, you'll teleport to Apatol while having a Monkey Grigri and Monkey Madness completed, and go to the rune shop at the market there. Then, if you have Town Hall Level 3 built at the Anachronia Base Camp, you'll be able to buy runes there as well. As well. After this, we are done with the runes and we'll be buying some other items, but keep in mind when you buy these runes, only some are profitable. The profitability of the runes changes all the time, so I'll leave a link in the description to the prices of the runes. Now you'll want to head to the Uglog Lodestone and go near the bank and trade the ogre at the meat stall and buy all the raw meat packs. After this, you'll want to get a Sophonim Slayer Dungeon Teleport and teleport there and buy out all the Feathers of Mott from the guy in front of the entrance. Now, if you have a Legends Cape and you've completed the Legends Quest, um, you can use the cape to go to the Legends Guild and buy Mithril Seeds from the shop owner on the top floor. But be careful with the Mithril Seeds as sometimes they can take a little bit to sell. Now you'll want to head to Taverly and go to the Herbler shop down south and buy out all of the bomb vials. Then lastly, we will head to Yadso in Relica and buy out all the Yakhide packs. And then go to Nayatsnot and buy out the balls of wool from the merchant in the bank. And you're right in the bank, so just bank them really quick and buy out all 100. After this, your shop run is complete. It should take you around 10 to 12 minutes if you have all the lodestones and teleports unlocked. In total, I made 2.6 mil GP in profit from these shop runs, which is really, really good money and a great money maker to add to your daily routine. All right, so now we're gonna be looking at mining crystal flecked sandstone and making them into crystal flasks. You can do this every day, and for this method, you'll need 81 mining and 89 crafting. You'll also need access to the Perfendos area and need as a first resort completed. For even more money, you can alternatively mine more crystal sandstone if you have level 115 dungeoneering in the Edamu resource dungeon. Now all you need to do for this method is bring your best pickaxe, preferably crystal, with some decent perks. You will then head to the Ithil district and you can mine up to 50 crystal sandstone there and turn them into crystal flasks with the glass blowing machine right next to the mining spot. Then if you have 115 dungeoneering, you can head to the Mylar district and go through the resource dungeon to mine 25 more crystal ore and turn them into flasks as well. In total, mining all these and making them into flasks took me around 6 minutes and I made 380k in GP. 
This is really good and a nice thing to do that resets every single day. Keeping on the same sort of topic, finally, to end off our run, we'll be looking at mining red sandstone and turning them into potion flasks. For this method, you'll need 89 crafting and 81 mining, just like the last. And of course, a crystal pickaxe. Resource for aura is also nice, but it's not needed. If you finish the elite desert tasks, you can mine more sandstone at another location. So with that said, let's get into the useful items and unlocks. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the useful items and the unlocks that you should ideally have when doing these farm runs. The first thing is the magical secutures, which are obtained through the fairy tale part one growing pains quest. They make it so that while harvesting herbs, hops, and allotments, you have a 10% increase in yield, so this is very, very important to have. Another very important unlock is the Scroll of Life from Dungeoneering. It can be purchased for 10,000 Dungeoneering tokens, and it allows you to occasionally receive seeds back while harvesting or digging up plants. This includes tree and fruit trees. This is nice if you are planting expensive herbs like spirit weed. The next item you'll want to have is the Juju Farming Potion. You can buy these off the GE for around 30k each. They last for 6 minutes a dose, and when harvesting from herb patches, you have a 33% chance to harvest 2 herbs in one pick. This is very, very strong and super important to have to make the most money possible. Another item that is useful is the Green Fingers Aura. These will grant you chance of harvesting extra crops from 3% for the normal aura, all the way up to 15% chance for the legendary aura. This is a really nice aura to have to increase your profit if you plan on doing lots of farm runs for easy money. Next, the Master Farmer outfit is a very nice outfit to have that will grant you bonus farming XP. It will also auto water your planted crops, it will give you a 10% chance for extra produce while harvesting fruit trees and bushes, and it will give you a 10% chance to harvest more hops, herbs, and allotments, and it will also auto-clean your herbs on harvest. This is not needed, but it is a very nice thing to have. Using super compost will increase the amount of yield you can get from a patch, so it is highly needed if you want to get as many herbs as possible. You can also use Ultra Compost, but it is very expensive and probably not worth using in my opinion. So to get into what we are going to plant, we are going to be focusing on planting things that can easily be gone back to and reharvested without having to plant any more seeds. This allows for fast and low effort money, although we will still have things you need to plant every run such as herbs and grapevines. This guide also assumes that you have high enough farming level to plant all these and is for maximum money. Of course, you can switch them out. In the description, I will list alternatives for each type of crop in order of profit in case you don't have high enough farming level for something and need to replace it. For our runs, we will be planting four limpet roots in the flower patches. For our herbs, we will be planting six spirit weeds and one bloodweed seed. For our bushes, we will be planting five poison ivy berry bushes. For our fruit trees, we will be planting seven papaya trees. For our cacti, we will be planting three dragon fruits. For our mushrooms, we will be planting two tomb shrooms. And finally, for more profit, we will be planting four lots of grapevines. Again, this will all be in the description so you can go and look at what I use on each run. Alright, first we're going to look at the startup cost. To start this method, you will need to plant 7 papaya trees, 5 poison berry bushes, and 3 dragon fruit cacti. These will be our passive money makers. Once we plant these, we will never have to go and plant them again. We can just go and harvest the fruit and berries from them and make some nice cash every day after they grow back. The total startup cost is looking at about 17k. Once you have these planted and they fully grow, now you can start doing this daily run to make some nice cash. For the daily run, you're going to need this inventory setup. 
Something I did mention here is you're going to need planks or protein planks, which are used for planting the grapevines. You don't need everything here as some items just make it easier to get places, but you will need 16 grapevine seeds, four limpert root seeds, one bloodweed seed, two tomb shroom seeds, six spirit weed seeds, a juju farming potion, a juju teleport spirit bag, an explorer ring is a nice teleport as well, and you need to have access to a fairy ring, and a portable spirit tree also helps. I also have my super compost for herbs and grapevine seeds, as well as a garden pie so I can harvest tomb shrooms since I'm not high enough level. A rune pouch is also nice for teleports around the game. As for the equipment setup, I have the full master farmer's outfit. Wilderness Sword 4 is so I have a teleport to the Bloodweed Patch, although you can use the Wilderness Lodestone and walk. Luck of the Dwarves for teleports, Grace of the Elves for access to a quick fairy ring and for Saren Spirits, and a Passage of the Abyss for more teleports around the game. Like I said, you don't need all this, but it, a lot of them are nice to help you get around faster. Alright, so now I'm going to tell you a little bit about the run. It's not very hard, you're going to just be going to different patches throughout the game, collecting your fruits and berries from tree patches, bush patches, and cactus patches, while harvesting and replanting all your herbs, limp roots, grapevines, and mushrooms. The whole run took me about 17 minutes, and I'm sure I could have done it a bit faster with more reliable teleports. To spare showing you a 17 minute clip of a farm run, I will write out the exact route that I took in the description and how I got there. I will also link you to a page on the wiki with all of the farming patch locations, which shows the optimal ways to get there as well. Like I said before, you don't have to do all these farm patches. There are a few that I couldn't even access myself, so you may make even more money per run than I did. Also, to be noted is some of these things grow back faster than others, so you can theoretically do this run multiple times a day, which can make you even more money. However, I left this as a daily guide since that is what most people will do. But by all means, do this as much as you can per day. I'm sure you can make a ton of money. Like I said, be sure to check the description if you'd like the route that I took for this farm run, and now we are going to get into how much profit I made during this entire run. Alright, so the first thing we're going to look at is how much it costs me to do each run. So, other than the 17k startup cost, it costs me 1.36 mil to do the entire run. This includes all the seeds. I was doing spirit weed, so they do cost more to plant, but most of your money is coming from the grapevine seeds and whatever herb seed you are going to be doing. And of course, the super compost. So it doesn't cost that much uh, to do each run. And as you'll see in a minute, we end up making much, much more than that. So if we look here, uh, this is how much we made. So we got six dragon fruit, 39 papaya, and 22 poison ivy berries, which are all the passive ones that we used our startup cost. So already 600k off just those. The tomb shrooms, I only did one patch, so I got 55k. Uh, the limpert roots, one of them died, but I got 77k. Bloodweed, we got 353k from one patch. And then we have our wines from our grapes. Our grapevines, you will actually have to use them with jugs of water to make them into wines. And we have a lot from those, like 1.2 mil. And then we have 1.35 mil in spirit weed. So a total of 3.7 mil uh, is how much we made, which is about 2.4 mil profit. Again, this took about 15 minutes or so. So that's about 10 mil an hour altogether. Um, because this will only take you 15 minutes per day. You make a nice 2.5 mil. Uh, if you do this, you know, every single day for the month, that's uh, that's 75 mil, which is enough to maintain your membership. Um, of course, you can do this more per day. Uh, you can use different herbs. Again, I'll put the priority of profit for all these things in the description. Um, but yeah, this is a really good method just to make some extra money. Now, like I said, I know there are gonna be people that comment like, oh, I can make 50 million an hour at Telos, why would I ever do this? 
Well, some people can't do super high level PVM. So this absolutely has like no skill requirement. You just log on for 15 minutes, do a farm run and you can maintain your membership. So this is for a lot of the more casual players, but also even if you're not a casual player and you just want a chill way to make a nice 10 mil an hour, uh, this is the way for you. So how to use the scavenging perk at a place like Corpse Spiders to AFK Get a ton of free invention components, but also make money at the same time completely AFK. This is a good thing to do on mobile as well because it's just so AFK and you really don't have to focus on anything. It's honestly a really good method to mobile. So firstly, I'm going to go over what scavenging is and how it is used in this scenario. So scavenging is an invention perk that has the chance of producing uncommon and rare invention materials when you kill monsters that give combat XP. So basically what this perk does is it will randomly give you components when killing monsters. We are going to use this to our advantage by killing very weak monsters so we can get tons and tons of scavenging procs and then we are going to convert our components that we get into cash to make this method into a money maker. So to get scavenging, you'll want to get scavenging four, which is obtained by using an ancient invention gizmo. I would recommend putting it on a non-degradable piece of armor to use for this method. So the easiest way to get scavenging four is to use precious components, which are easily obtained by disassembling jewelry like diamond amulets or things like that. Now the odds of getting scavenging 4 is about 6.5% to get some iteration of scavenging 4. It'll cost you 9 precious components each attempt, and your chances are increased by using an extreme invention potion at level 120 invention. Now once you have the scavenging 4 perk, it's time to get our setup ready and start AFKing for some easy components and cash. All right, so now that you have your scavenging perk, we are going to be looking at the gear and inventory setup for doing this method. So for the gear setup, you basically need a wand and an orb, and more important is a wand or orb with chroming on it. The chroming perk allows you to chain your ability and kill more monsters at once, which is vital for this method. And you can get the chroming perk by using shadow components. So other than chroming, you will also need air spells, and it really doesn't matter which spells you use, so you might as well use the cheapest air spell that you can. Luck of the Dwarves or any luck ring is fine, but it's not really needed. And then for armor, you really won't need any, since the things we are killing only have 150 HP and will easily die in one hit no matter what armor you use. But make sure you are using at least some sort of non-degradable armor that has your scavenging perk on it. As for your inventory setup, we will be making use of the aggression potion to make corpse spiders constantly attack us, which will allow us to AFK for a full 6 minutes at once. You will also want to have a smoke devil familiar with dust cloud special attack scrolls. Now the reason you'll want this familiar and these scrolls is because the smoke devil familiar uses a dust cloud special attack that will deal 791 magic damage on up to 6 random enemies. So it's kind of like using a chinchampa or ice barrage attack. You will want to set your auto fire rate to 1 on your familiar, so then your smoke devil familiar will constantly cast this as much as it can, and it will make it very easy to AoE a ton of the corpse spiders down. A spring cleaner is also an optional thing to bring if you want to break down some of the cheaper drops, but it's not really needed. So to do this method, all you'll want to do is go to Lumbridge and go to the catacombs and you'll want to go to the corpse spiders. Once you're at the corpse spiders, you'll want to set up your ability bar like this. You'll want your ability bar to have chain, dragon's breath, and corruption blast at the front with revolution on. This will make it so that you're constantly using AoEs and getting as many kills as possible per hour. Make sure you turn your auto retaliate on and then once you're here you'll drink your aggression potion and then you'll basically just AFK. 
You don't need to worry about prayer. You don't need to worry about food or dying. The only thing that you may want to keep an eye out for is if you get an unchecked spider egg drop because these are possible to be dropped from corpse spiders and they'll add a little bit of money to your profit. This method is honestly just so nice and super AFK. You can literally just click on your aggression pot, turn auto retaliate on, and AFK for a full six minutes. It's one of the most AFK combat methods I've ever done, and you really don't need to pay attention to anything as you won't really get any loot or have any chance of dying. I'd say this method is super good if you're looking for something to AFK on mobile because you really won't need to pay that much attention at all, and it's honestly probably really good if you're just afking in general maybe watching a movie you know basically whatever you can get up i got up and left my computer screen uh, went downstairs got a snack came back up and i was still there just killing corpse spiders so it's really really nice and not to mention you'll get some good components and money so now we're going to look at what components i got in an hour and then look at how to convert these components into gp all right, so after an hour of killing the corpse spiders, I actually got quite a bit of components and surprisingly lucky on the spider egg drops. So the main items you're gonna want to make to convert your components into cash is firstly, mechanized chinchampas. Now, the main components you're going to be getting through scavenging is the living components. You will actually get living components faster through scavenging than you do even disassembling. So in the hour, I ended up getting 30 living components, which meant I could make 300 mechanized chinchampas. The other component needed for mechanized chinchampas are very common, so you probably have a lot of them already. And if you don't, they end up only being about 500 GP to 1k each, so it won't cut into your profit too much at all if you have to disassemble for them. Chinchampas and living components are definitely going to be a big chunk of your money gained while you use this method. After this, I ended up making equipment siphons, which require most notably precious components, which I ended up getting 50 precious components during the hour of corpse spiders. Dexterous components are also required, which I had a lot of already, but I did end up getting a decent amount of them as well during the hour. This is also going to be one of the main methods and main things you'll be able to make while doing this method and you'll be able to use your components and cash them out on equipment siphons. So finally, the last item is I ended up making augmenters, which no most notably you'll get powerful and enhancing components while killing corpse spiders. And I ended up being able to make five augmenters, which is not too shabby for an hour spent. Of course, you will need some of the common components, but I already had them. And the main components that you will be needing that are expensive is the powerful components, which you should get a lot from scavenging. So after the full hour, I ended up being able to make five augmenters, 300 mechanized chins, and 10 equipment siphons. I already had some of the common materials, but most, if not all, of the uncommon materials were gained during this hour. I was also lucky enough to get 4 unchecked spider egg drops to add onto my profits, and I ended up getting some decent invention materials along the way like Zamrock and Ceridomen components as well, which are decently expensive and will come in handy for getting perks if you ever need them. In total, I ended up making 8 million GP in the hour, completely AFK, minus a little bit for the Chinchampa cost and the incandescent energy, so probably about 7 mil. Of course, this can vary depending what opponents you get since it is luck based, but based off just the living components and the power and precious components, you're probably going to end up easily being able to make 3 or 4 mil an hour, extremely AFK, while also having a chance of getting other rare components components like Noxious and Illajunkin. All in all, I really enjoy this method and I could see it being super amazing if you decide to do something like AFK this for a week straight and stack up a ton of components and then you can cash them out while also getting a chance at super rare components like Noxious for Biting or Illajunkin for Aftershock to help you with your future perking. Alright guys, so to start you're gonna, gonna wanna go to Port Serum and you're basically gonna wanna go here on the map 
and there will be a milk cellar north of Port Serum near the Cabbage Patch that sells 200 buckets of milk and you're going to want to get these and basically go south and bank them at the deposit box near the Monks of Entrana and you can get around 200. Um, you'll probably get around 225 by the time uh, you finish because some will have respawned but it only took me about three minutes maybe three, three and a half, four minutes to do all these. It's about, uh, you know, nine trips, 10 trips. So it really doesn't take that long. And uh, the buckets of milk actually sell for about 1.4K each um, on the GE. So for free to play, this is honestly one of the main sources of money uh, doing this daily run. So um, I didn't know about this, but I found this out and it is really quite interesting and good. So make sure you go and you spend the three to four minutes buying out the buckets of milk and we're going to go on to the next shop now. All right, guys, so now you're going to want to go to the Port Serum fishing shop and you're going to want to buy out all the feathers. Now, I buy the feather packs, but don't pay attention to that because you actually can't buy them on free to play. But don't worry, we'll take them out of the price check and they won't be factored in. And then after this, you're going to want to head north and you're going to want to go to Betty's Magic Shop. Now, Betty's Magic Shop has a ton of runes and other items that we'll get into. Um, but the rune shops are where you're going to make a ton of money on free to play. It's mostly because runes just go for a lot and there's a few shops in free to play where you can get them. So when you go in, you're going to want to buy the fire runes, the water runes, the air runes, the earth runes, the mine runes, the body runes, and the chaos runes. And I buy the death runes. They don't make you a ton of money, so you don't have to buy them, but I ended up buying them. And then we actually want to buy the wands. So we're going to want to buy the import wands, the batwing wands. Uh, I also bought the batwing tops, which also work. And uh, you're going to want to basically buy all the wands but the wizard ones. And the reason is, I believe, is because people will disassemble these on... Uh, on members worlds using invention to get components so uh, that's kind of why uh, you can sell them for profit so I end up buying all the wands out here we finish the bat wing and buy the spider wing uh, wands and then I end up buying the spider silk shields which are also uh, a bit of profit and I'm sure there's other items in there that you might be able to profit off of so feel free to try all right guys so after this you're going to want to head to lumbridge and go north to the fishing shop and in this shop you'll basically um, just be buying out the uh, thousand feathers and that's pretty much it um, it won't make you a ton of money but it does add up uh, you know a little bit because you know they're feathers and they go for way more in the ge so now we're going to go to borthorpe and here we will be hitting um, the magic shop is going to be the first place we hit and uh, this is where, like I said before, you're going to make the most of your money. You're going to want to buy the same runes as before. And don't forget to take the free runes if they're there because, I mean, it's free money. Come on. Um, so here I did not buy the death runes because I figured out they just aren't worth it. But all the other runes will make you a decent amount of money. And now you'll want to head south. Um, so you want to go through the, the trees and pass the, like, uh, Druidic Ritual place and you'll want to go to the summoning shop and you'll want to buy out all the empty pouches. So there should be about 5,000 of them. Uh, you can take the free spirit shards and stuff while you're here as well. And then you're going to want to head over to the Herbler shop at Jadix. And here you'll want to buy the Limpert Roots. Um, they're only 7 GP and then you'll also want to buy the Red Berries. Um, so this is going to make you a decent amount of money as well. So not too bad there. All right, and finally, coming on the last part of the run, you're going to want to head to Varrock, and you'll want to head on up to the rune shop. And this should be pretty much the same drill as before. You're going to buy the, um, the fire runes, the water runes, the air runes, the earth runes, the mine runes, and the chaos runes. So basically all the runes but the death runes you'll be wanting to buy. And like I said before, do not forget to take your free runes because that's free money. And that's about it for the run. It only takes about five or six minutes. And now we're going to head and look at how much we made. All right, guys. So now we are into the portion where our run is done and we are going to be selling everything. So basically, like I said before, the brunt of the money is going to be coming from the runes. But I was also pleasantly surprised that a lot of the wands that I got from Betty's shop actually ended up selling for a pretty decent amount over 
um, the GE price and same with the milk so like I expected these things not to sell like the Batwing or maybe the important ones would take a while to sell but they all literally instant sold I think the only thing I had um, that didn't instant sell was the red berries but literally everything else instant sold and they sold for over um, the med price a lot of them which I was really surprised by and it makes me wonder if there are more things in the shop that could be decent that people might disassemble that it might not reflect how much they actually go for on the GE so I feel like you could make even more if you research and find more of those that I wasn't actually aware of um, but all in all this run is heavily carried by the milk and the runes basically um, like I said before it takes five or six minutes um, it's not going to take too much of your time, maybe 10 minutes um, if, you know, it takes you a while to longer to do the milk. But honestly, it's not that long at all. And uh, as you can see here, like I showed before, like some of those wands were selling for 2k each and they cost like 100 GP, I believe. So that was really, really nice. And we spent about 120k or so. Um, and as you can see here, 552K because we started with a mill. So our profit is 552K in about, you know, six minutes or so. So, I mean, obviously this comes out to way more. This comes out to about 5.5 mil an hour um, if you're going just by time. But of course, you can only do this once a day. Uh, so if you're planning to do this, uh, make sure you just, you know, put it into your daily routine. Like I said, it doesn't take long at all. A lot of people like myself may have a high dungeoneering level with tons of tokens, either from doing the skill or from elite dungeons. And you may have a ton of tokens left over without any upgrades to buy. For instance, you may have bought all the upgrades you want, like Charming Imp, Bone Crusher, gold accumulator, elite dungeons upgrades, stuff like that. You have everything spent. You don't really need to buy anything with your dungeon tokens. Of course, you can always trade in your dungeon tokens for dungeoneering XP, but is that really the best use of your tokens? In today's video, I'm going to show you a few ways to convert your dungeoneering tokens into cold, hard cash. Now, some of these methods will change over time, so make sure to always check the prices before you do any of these. Okay guys, so the first and one of the absolute best ways I found to turn your Dungeoneering tokens into GP is through making the Elite Serenic or Tectonic armor. If you don't know, you can make the Elite Serenic top or Elite Tectonic top, and what you need is a bunch of supplies, but you also need five chaotic spikes for the Elite Serenic top, and five chaotic remnants for the elite tectonic top. Now, basically those cost 90,000 dungeoneering tokens per top, and you will also need a bunch of supplies. So this method is going to cost you a bit of startup cash to do. When I checked the price of Serenic bodies, they were going for about 450 to 460 million GP each. So in total to buy all the supplies, which you needed ancient scales, you needed thread, you needed Prasilic Essence, and then of course the Chaotic Spikes. Um, it didn't take too long to buy. I basically instant bought it all. And in total to buy all the supplies to make one Elite Serenic body, it cost me 426 mil GP. I ended up buying enough supplies to make two Elite Serenic bodies, and I spent a total of 852 million GP. Now keep in mind that I instant bought all of these supplies. You could get things for even cheaper if you waited, but I was impatient and just insta bought it all. Now keep in mind you will need level 93 crafting to create these. So after I got all my supplies, basically now is where you convert your Dungeoneering tokens. So you need Chaotic Spikes. So I went and bought 5 Chaotic Spikes for each body which ended up being a total of 10 Chaotic Spikes. I ended up spending 180,000 of my Dungeoneering tokens. Now after this, I simply had all the supplies and I crafted the Elite Serenic Tops. I checked the price and they were going for about 455 mil each, so that's how much I put these in the GE for. Now keep in mind, an Elite Serenic body is not something that's bought constantly it's really expensive and you know the elite armors aren't you know bought a ton so they will take a bit to sell but be patient so i left this in overnight and they ended up selling within 24 hours 
Now, keep in mind, this took me a total of about five minutes of work, and I ended up making a 56 million GP profit in around five minutes. I sold these for over 900 mil for the two, and like I said, I spent around 850 mil to make them. So it only took five minutes of work and I successfully converted 180k Dungeoneering tokens and made about 50 to 60 mil profit. Now, keep in mind this method will probably not work as well when I post this video, but don't fear. This tends to happen when content creators release money-making videos on RuneScape 3, and I guarantee you in about a week or two after everyone initially stops doing this, this will be worth it again. So make sure you calculate everything out like I did and check the prices accordingly before you do any of these methods. But yeah, this method costs a bit of startup money, actually quite a bit of startup money, and a little bit of patience, but honestly, I made 60 mil and I really didn't do anything except spend 180k dunge tokens. So uh, yeah, it's a really, really good method to get rid of some extra dunge tokens and make some money. All right, so now we are going to go on to another method I found to convert your dungeoneering tokens into GP. And this one requires a bit more effort and is a little slower, but pretty much everyone can do this and it's kind of a passive thing. So basically you're going to be buying vital spark drop enhancers from the elite dungeon reward shop. Now they cost 1000 dungeon layering tokens each and what they do is they will award you an additional vital spark when you get a vital spark as a drop. So a vital spark costs 185k each. So this comes out to 185k GP per 1000 engineering tokens. Now of course you can't just convert these instantly to GP, but there are a few ways to use these up to convert them fast. So the first thing is of course going to be killing corrupted creatures in the Softnim Slayer dungeon. You can very easily AFK something like corrupted scorpions and get a ton of vital spark drops and of course they'll be doubled if you have your enhancers. You can also just bring these vital spark enhancers every time you have a task in the Softnim Slayer dungeon and just make some extra money on your slayer tasks. Another option is you can also kill the Magister. Now the Magister is a boss that requires 115 Slayer and it is honestly really really good money. But the thing about the Magister is he drops 10 or 20 Vital Sparks uncommonly. This means if you have your Enhancers they'll be doubled so you can get an extra 1.8 to 3.7 million GP every time the Magister drops Vital Sparks if you have the enhancers on you of course. This is a great use to get a lot of extra cash out of the Magister and if you're ever killing the Magister these are absolutely a must have. Like I said before this isn't a super fast way to convert your Dungeoneering tokens to GP like the Elite, Serenic, or Tectonic but you will make a ton of money off your Dungeoneering tokens this way. All right, so lastly, the last way to convert your Dungeoneering tokens into GP is sticking in kind of a similar fashion as the Vital Spark Drop Enhancers, and this is going to be the Softenim Slayer Dungeon Drop Enhancers. Now these cost a bit more and they're 10k each, but they will allow you to increase the drop rate of the Key to the Crossing while killing all monsters in the Softenim Slayer Dungeon. So basically these are only worth using on task because they increase your drop rate on task from a 1 in 75 chance to a 1 in 60 chance for monsters to drop keys to the crossing. So this is a 20% drop rate increase for keys to the crossing, which as of now are going for almost 700k each. So if you couple these enhancers with the vital spark enhancers and you camp out in the Softnim Slayer dungeon or you use them every time you have a task in the Softnim Slayer dungeon, these will convert a ton of your Dungeoneering tokens into GP and it'll really increase the amount you make on these Slayer tasks. All right, everybody. So that is going to do it for the ultimate money making guide. We have a ton of methods that I have covered over the past year, uh, low level, mid level, high level, some other niche methods, videos that didn't get as many views as I thought they should have, free to play methods, 
all kinds of stuff. I went through every single method and checked the GP per hour, see if anything's changed, and I made sure to update accordingly. Like for the Lost Grove creatures, I made sure to update and show that they now drop Grimoire pages, which, you know, uh, adds into the profit. So I made sure to go and check, and I didn't include any methods uh, that I went through and saw weren't making any money anymore, like the egg larder method. Eggs went down from 2K to like 400 GP each. So obviously that wasn't a method I was going to include. So it took a while to go through all this, cut it down, edit it all. But I hope this is going to be an awesome video that people can come back to whenever they need some money making help. So make sure to leave a like down below and subscribe for, you know, a ton more money making guides and things like this. And thanks for watching, everybody.